Welcome back once again to the Hogcast. Join the FTCR crew as they cover the latest in Sonic the Hedgehog happenings. Aw, oh, yeah! Hello, and welcome back to episode four of the Hogcast. It's the 25th anniversary month of the series, not the podcast. Hooray! Yay! I figured we should probably actually explain the show in the first few minutes in case people don't check out the last episodes. But we talk about Sonic. Big shock. Everything but the comics, except... It's the, the gaming podcast. It, more the gaming, TV. TV, cartoon, music, whatever. But we've been slightly talking about comics because people keep asking in emails, even though we told them not to. We only told them the one time. Oh, two. people kept writing in, so... Um, I wanted to give a quick shout-out. Um, I won't give his full name because I doubt he wanted that. But Jonathan, um, we mentioned, I think, last episode, that we uh, missed out on a ticket window for the 25th anniversary party. Mm. So we offered it up to Gareth. Gareth can't go because life costs money. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I only have it at kids' expense if who fucking knew. <clears throat> yeah, so. I didn't. Knew me, me neither. So we checked with Jonathan. Um, his extra ticket was transferred over to me. We're very appreciative. Um, I'm not, I ain't going. I don't give a fuck. Uh, Gareth doesn't care. Yeah, Gareth, I don't care either. Yeah, we don't care. It's Chris. Yeah, we're, we're going to sit. Wait, you're going to miss out on Chili Dog Casserole. What? I was just meaning we're very appreciative <laughs> that our audience would be so generous to listen to our podcast and go, oh, I'll help these guys out. So we yep. we appreciate yeah. that notion. Maybe we don't all appreciate me <laughs> specifically getting yeah, that fuck ticket. You, Chris. But that Jonathan's awesome. I raised yeah. my glass to Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah, so. uh, different Thank Jonathan you. than the says Jonathan. Jonathan. But yeah. this Jonathan. Different Jonathan. Who makes yeah. inappropriate comments and I'll spout the dragon, OP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jonathan also wrote in with a question, so we'll be hearing back from him a little later. But first... Oh, gives us a ticket. Let's fucking open the podcast. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I was going to say I forgot to introduce you too, but now fuck it. So Sega sent out... <laughs> in the news. I'm Tron John. <laughs> <laughs> not what I'm drinking, TJ, please. <laughs> At least you're not choking on corn. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first item, TJ's Tron John, Gareth is FTA, and Sega sent out a survey asking how interested fans would be in a Sonic game featuring characters from the following series. <clears throat> My Little Pony... <laughs> First one. We gotta finally get that rainbow dash and Sonic Rice crossover. Yeah. I'm presuming that's probably the most recent cartoon, My Little Pony. Uh, uh. Adventure Time, which we'll touch on in a bit. Pixar, Capcom, Looney Tunes, Disney, Nintendo, and Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Where's it? He's already crossed over with some of them. Yeah. He's already crossed over with Nintendo. Capcom. With all, the, all the Mario stuff. Capcom in the comics. In the comics, at least. Disney, Wreck It Ralph was in All Stars Racing Transformed. And he was in Wreck-It Ralph. And he was in Wreck-It Ralph himself. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like how deep rooted you are in the Sonic like part of it. I'm keeping this... you were like, Wreck-It Ralph was in All-Star Racing <laughs> Transformed. He was localized as Sonic himself. <laughs> so... You mean Sonic was the star of Wreck-It Ralph? They, they, they did... Um, the director that Rich Moore did premiere that footage at, I believe, as but... Sonic... Boom? 2012? 2012. I mean... Or 2011. I mean, Jesus, at, at Momocon 2015, we went to that one panel specifically to see the artist who animated Sonic. <laughs> no, no, no. Who, in... who designed his model. Okay. And he told us, to go on a quick tangent, I forget the guy's name, but there's an awesome uh, Jackie. picture. Jackie. Jackie something. Yeah. And he told us that Sega sent them a reference model, and he said it was too good. It was, like, too high quality. They had to make a worse model yeah. to use in their Pixar. <laughs> like, their Disney films, like... Sega is better than Disney confirmed. It's yeah, like, I forget. If no, he... Sonic Team better than <laughs> <laughs> Sonic Team better than Disney confirmed. I forget if he gave a specific polygon count, but I remember him basically just saying it was too much. Yeah, it was like the pointy coins were too high. So, uh, with the survey, uh, the responses can list from quote because I don't know if this is even grammatically correct. Very not interested. <laughs> <laughs> Too very interested within I don't know these characters outlier. Um, I'll know it's unlikely that's going to lead to a direct crossover. It might just be what seeing interest song fans have in other series for tonal reasons. Mm. Jonathan's uh, Jonathan TJ, sorry, is crying already. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I am very not interested in this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, the survey came from Sega Networks. So if anything, this might be leading to something. If anything, like Angry Birds and Sonic Dash or whatever that was. What? Remember that classic? Well, I've read, some people online have said that apparently this is fairly common. 
yeah. for these types of surveys. So, like, it's not just it's not just Sega being like, what do you want to see? Apparently, other companies do this kind of thing all the time. Yeah. So, it's not too atypical. So, naturally, I have to ask, and I can read the options again if you want. Out of all of those, which one would you prefer Sonic to feature characters from? You know, it's... it's again, <laughs> it's because, it's because it, it doesn't state what type of game, like, you know... Yeah, so. We've had... We've had Sonic in, in Nintendo games like Smash Brothers and, and, Mar- and um, all the uh, Olympic games, but I'd like to see it an actual, I, everyone says it, an actual platform where Mario was like, or just because of how much I love Worlds Collide, like a Sonic Mega Man game. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. Or we put Team Up Sonic and Gex. I think that's the best campaign. <laughs> Two <Tell> time. <laughs> but about- only if he's voiced by Danny Don John Jules. What about what about Sonic and Glover? <laughs> Can we have that, please? Uh, that'd be like mine and Carrie's perfect game. <laughs> What if Sonic wore Glover? Uh, That's ew. why he hasn't been in a game in a while. He's on Sonic. Game Theory! <laughs> is Sonic the Hedgehog wearing Glover? <laughs> but that's just a theory. <laughs> a Game Theory! <laughs> How about you, TJ, other than Glover? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you want the uh, My Little Pony, don't you? I do. I just want Sonic riding one of the... My Little Ponies. This is the thing. The yeah, ponies well. ponies are only useful if they're oh my God. providing transportation. What would but Sonic... then why would Sonic need to ride a pony? He'd be like, yeah, this, this is boring. And then he'd get off the pony and just be like... What about Rainbow <laughs> Dash? Why would Sonic the ride f- a pony when he could be riding a pony? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would just make DeviantArts by a million copies. <laughs> You know what? I disagree with Gareth. I don't. I don't want a Sonic uh, Mario crossover platform game. I think that would be stupid. You're stupid. I just think it would. It, there are two different types of level design. <laughs> so is classic and modern Sonic. Not Mind really. Well, yeah, they they are. They mm-hmm. both feature going fast, but aside from that, they're kind of different. F- fucking That's amateur. why everyone's been crying for more classic Sonic over the last ten years. That's true. I mean, I would. I would argue. That um, you'd be wrong, but you can argue. I would argue that if you put Mario, oh god, here we go, and and his like his exact physics into, um, like, like level <laughs> one of of a Sonic game, like the the classic Sonic games, yeah. he could he could do any of those. Yeah, but so? TJ, you haven't even completed SA two. What should we listen to you for? <laughs> no, I think I think someone. I think you said that so much it's lost all meaning. The point's panel. not that classic Mario or any character could complete a level. It's that they're different ideas of what. Yeah, and I think someone is. even like someone even broke them down, and I figured out that I think like classic Mario is actually faster in game than Sonic is. Like he's is that apparently I, I may have mis- misread this, but I think someone was like using mathematics and shit. Were like. Classic Mario actually runs faster. But that that's just like a game theory. <laughs> <laughs> As for me, I want to say Pixar, but we had the least characters that looked like Pixar, so I don't need Sonic and Finding Nemo or Finding Dory or whatever the fuck. Uh, He'd just be dead. He can't swim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just going to say Nintendo, since I lost all train of thought. So spe- speaking of Adventure Time, I tied that in quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jake the dog and something the hedgehog. I am very not interested. <laughs> so ironically, one of the listed series from the last question is now possible, as Sonic was announced as an upcoming character for popular Toys to Life game Lego Dimensions. Yay! Yay! Uh, th- Th- this was late, like I want to say at least a month or two ago. Yeah, yeah. I I wrote that off immediately. Like that's why I never brought it up on this podcast. Yeah. I'm like, nah, uh, don't you feel stupid now? I should have been on the ball. How, where did that leak from anyway? Some random like Lego enthusiast forum. Someone mm-hmm. posted and like knew. Okay. But it was just some random like no one outside the Lego but, uh, community. From what, from what I read, though, apparently that guy very yeah. well respected within the Lego community. So, like he's. When he says stuff, apparently he's, he'd reported on previous things that came true. Okay. So his words yeah. kind of had held, they hold weight in the Lego community. He was like, Sonic's, and he was like, I think the original, the original post was, I can't, I can't, I don't know everyone who's come in, mm-hmm. but I can confirm Sonic the Hedgehog will be in the next version. And everyone was like, <gasps> I mean, everyone just, want, I mean, TSSZ is happy just because after all these years, Sonic Dimension <laughs> is finally a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the outside looking in, it's like, a Lego enthusiast? What? No, no. No one gave it. The time I, uh, of day. When I, when I saw, I think it was, when did that trailer actually go up? Was it Thursday? Wednesday? Oh, Thursday? Yeah. The Wednesday. teaser oh, went Wednesday, the ring. Thursday. Well, went up Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday, um, I know Matt 
post uh, Tales Channel posted uh, that the the screen crap screen wrap screen crap <laughs> screen cap of um of like uh, what's that character from Golem? Golem? Yeah, Gol like reaching the for the ring, and then he was like he was like yeah. Sonic's definitely in this damn game. And I looked at it and I just went, Yep. I'm, yep. <laughs> Whatever you say. Remember there was a thing where that night there was like, people like, oh, they you know, because I think um, Lego or Travis or whoever like released a few like five second tr- like teasers. Yeah. Of like, obviously, there was one of like the Wicked Witch of the West who was already in the game and Gone and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then after the one with the ring, everyone was like, oh, that's going to be Sonic. And it's like the one with the Wicked Witch of the West, people were like, there's water. Like, Giz- Gizmo and Gremlins had been a rumored thing. People were like, oh, that's, that's probably going to be what Gizmo is. Because, you know, water don't get wet, or what have you. And um, people, like, they always uploaded a few pictures of, like, Sonic's Lego model. Um, it was t- turned out to be different than his final one. But on Wednesday, it was like, this is what it looks like. And I'll be honest with you. The other one looked better? Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 the final one is, is fine. It looks good. But the, the, the fake one looked a bit better. I would have preferred the fake one to be yeah. real. Because I saw that, and I'm like, oh, there's no way that isn't real, because it looks so good. Mm. Like, the quills look much better than the actual one did, but, eh, you know, it still looks good. I wish it's I would have saw, saw the... I'm surprised it's a, like, it's a completely different... It's a, it's a unique face. Yeah. Because I think some people were expecting, like, you know, generic Lego face with, like, a Sonic hat on yeah. top, <laughs> which would have been terrible, but... Either way, if you step on that thing, you're fucked. I think so many people like people, the, the the new most painful Lego to step on is now Salt the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, um, what a time to be alive! I'm buying it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get the game, but I'm definitely buying that. Oh yeah, yeah, the Sonic Lego thing. My if I if there's like a Sonic World or level to go through, I'm gonna buy the game. If it's just the little figures, Carousel, yeah, then I'll just buy the figures. I think that hasn't been because they've announced because a lot of the other characters were like. Uh, Mission Impossible and yeah. Harry Potter and um, Tom Cruise to- and uh, like <laughs> the A Team and yeah. some of them like the Harry Potter and Adventure Time like those those playlists have been revealed so it's like, this, like I think it's like Harry Potter obviously has like a world and like A Team has like just a character and a vehicle mm-hmm. Adventure Time I think has a world and a character pack they haven't revealed yet what their plans for Sonic are yeah although Sega slash Aaron Webber have you know there's a lot more to talk about which I believe these aren't even coming out until September. Mm-hmm. So I think that was the projected delivery for the like ones they revealed already. So it's been yeah. a while. Makes sense. Closer out. to the holiday. I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping that the only thing I really hope to come of this, like you know, it'll be nice to have the little Sonic Lego figure or whatever mm-hmm. they do with it. Yeah. What have you? I want like this would be the first time in years that I would buy an actual Lego set to put together if they made a Sonic one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm still holding that hope that at some point they'll put in the Ninja Turtles. Oh, that's probably going to happen. Like, yeah. if Sonic and Tom Cruise is in, the Turtles... <laughs> Chris did this thing where, like, he has no idea who Tom Cruise is. So, he was like, he's like, uh, if they put Sonic and and then he looks at the list I was, and then squints his eyes a little bit. Goes, I was focusing on Tom my notes. Tom Cruise. <laughs> like, wait, wait, some, some of, some of, like, some Tim of, Craze? <laughs> was like... Something like Harry Potter, Adventure Time, even Sonic, still kind of uh, relevant today, makes sense. Some of the, like, like, I love Gremlins, I love yeah. Goonies. Never, like, I would not expect a Goonies playlist for Lego Dimensions. Yeah. So, like, they obviously... They just threw a bunch of 80s at that, at this update. Yeah, but, well, uh, in the original one, they had Back to the Future, which was a, which was a yeah, ghost. Oh, so they have, um, female Ghostbusters. That was also um, part of the, yeah. I was gonna say, I'm covering a lot of the series soon in the notes, by the way. But, oh, okay. Yeah, I think with that, they're going for the adult, too, that grew up and is, like, just having kids old enough for this. So it's like, here's shit from the 80s, here's shit from now, bam, bam, give us all your money, fuck you. Yeah, so hopefully at one point, I, I, if, if they had a Ninja Turtle playset, I would, if Sonic was in it, that would, would be what would make me get the game. I'm kind of surprised yeah. they're not already in, honestly. Like, that seems like a really big missed opportunity, personally. Because they're still really popular, right? I think they'll still yeah. be relevant after, even, even after the hype of the second movie has gone down. I'm sure that they'll still be what relevant. Hype? That movie's pretty much bombed. <laughs> Hey. Two Thoughts are still relevant, but I think this, that movie people didn't care for or, mm. or want to see. Mm. They're fools, though. So, sh- yeah, yeah. So we they didn't get a lot of advertising. So we basically covered my next line. Um, I just want to reiterate that this means Sonic now exists and can interact with A Team, Tom Cruise, Scooby Doo, Adventure Time, E.T., the Goonies, Gizmo, Portal characters, the Teen Titans, and I don't even know what else. Um, this also the Simpsons. The Simpsons. Yeah. This also means Sonic. Batman. 
This also means Sonic is a hypocritical monster after his speech about game hopping in Wreck-It Ralph. So I'm really upset about the integrity of this character. And well, I think technically, I think Traveler's Tales need to be sued. Well, it's interesting, that, it's interesting that you bring up Traveler's Tales because, of course, they have prior yeah. experience with the Hedgehog. They they, they created they Sonic, Sonic 3. R. <laughs> Sonic R and Sonic 3D Blast. Oh. So they have experience with him. And so I, I wonder if, if we get... I wonder if because I think every character's got some kind of level. I don't think they. I don't think they. they I don't think they've just so far released just a. He's a character. I think it's people they have yeah. like some kind of level thing. I wonder. Yeah, I think they have levels and then they have story packs and those are like more in depth with like voice scenes and things. I don't know. Well, those are a lot more. I think the Harry Potter level pack is like fifty bucks. Or yeah. The other ones are like twenty or so. Yeah, like those are very intricate. I don't. I I, I don't I don't see us getting a Sonic level pack. I see um maybe hopefully you know we'll get a level when. I wonder, like, if, it was, if they'll use voice clips. Or well, they will, but, like, in... Uh, you know what's weird, though? Like, as as high profile as this game is, and they've gotten, you know, people like Gary Oldman, he voices the bad guy. They've brought people like Chris Pratt back to mm-hmm. voices, stuff for Jurassic World and Lego Movie. A lot of stuff they use voice clips for, like, the... What struck me the most was the Simpsons world. Nothing original is there. Like, every mm-hmm. voice clip is used, is taken from, from the TV show. Weird. I watched the uh, cutscenes for that randomly because I just wanted to see what the game looked like. Mm-hmm. It did seem a little awkward, so that would explain that. What's funny though is that his open Homer's opening line of "It's not sending out; it's cross promotion." is taken from the Lego episode of The Simpsons. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's a joke they've done. They've used twice now. <laughs> what I understand, Bart has no has no voices. Like because right. like Bart's a playable character, you can buy him, but like he is apparently he has no voice clips in the entire game. Maybe. I caramba. <laughs> I caramba my, indeed. Eat my shorts. So if that's everything about that, I think that's really exciting. I mean, I heard the, I've heard the game's pretty good if you like Lego games. So Lego games are they're fun, you know. They're, you mm-hmm. know, again, if it was if it wasn't for the fact that it was seventy bucks to buy the thing, I would. Although one thing, I, one last thing I'll say is that unlike things like Skylanders or Disney Infinity, where with every new upgrade you need to buy a new portal thing, yeah. they've confirmed the original one will work. So it looks like they're just adding content. They're not redesigning the entire game as they have done with the previous yeah. Toys to Life. This isn't like a 2.0 thing where everything else is... It's obsolete. Yeah. I can just say, I'm glad I wasn't the only one, because I saw someone ask Aaron Weber about this. I'm glad I wasn't the only one that was concerned that this was... The 25th anniversary <laughs> game. I don't, think, and I, I, see, I don't get people who would think that, because Sega isn't doing this. Sega just yeah. licensed him out. People think Fire and Ice is the 25th anniversary game. Even I, though I it was meant see. to come out last year. Yeah, so people are dumb. Yeah, TJ. Not you, our dear listeners. You are all very smart. No, TJ's just a fucking moron. Oh, fucking TJ. Fucking... Please don't get mad at me. I'm just a simple thing. <laughs> That's true, you are. That's why we love you. <laughs> so next up, uh, we don't usually cover comic news. or well, we say we don't, we do. But since Sonic Says is temporarily dead, <laughs> Sonic Mega Drive just got a second issue confirmed. It's the second number one. <laughs> it's called The Next Level. Uh, we know this thanks to IGN. If you didn't know, Sonic Mega Drive takes place in a comic... Uh, it's a comic that takes place... After the events of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, mm-hmm. with Eggman searching for Agent Gears to power his latest mech called the Mega Drive. Yep. According to the editor, uh, Vincent Lavallo, the spinoff series will play back in some way back into the main comic book continuity, but he wouldn't say how. Um, the first issue releases next month in July, and according to Lavallo, has the potential to become a series if, if not of, if demand is high enough. Uh, rest in peace, the Sonic Boom series. <laughs> so I mean, with this I mean, like this because what they were they were really pushing the you know pre-order this at your comic book store. They, yeah. And so I'm gonna assume because the book hasn't come out yet, pre-orders were high enough. Even I ordered one, so I, I like I knew my store was gonna get it. I didn't bother placing one because mm. I don't care, Archie. I hate you. Um, oh. but uh, <laughs> so like a pre-orders must have been good enough for them to at least you know not so it's not a full series yet, but they at least go into another yeah. issue. Although again, the fact that it's called Sonic Mega Drive: The Next Level Issue One. So confusing. I mean, they just—I know why they're doing. They're it, just but... doing it because issue one so bad, so it's a cheap, lazy tactic. Yeah. Congrats, Archie. The art's incredible, though. Tyson right. Hess's artwork is oh, so good. God. Matt Hermes is coloring both issues. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's it's like in in writing everything, and then it's Tyson Hess on uh, pencil. I'm not sure if he's inking or I'm not sure who the inker is. Yeah, I, I think I'm pretty sure I saw a tweet that he said he was doing his own inking because I think okay. he does on his own book is the Diesel. Yeah, he does that stuff. So yeah, I know that that book looks. They released some pages. The artwork is so good. I know, like mm-hmm. it's so good. And I would, as much as I, as I love the main book, I love I love to become a, a, its own thing. I will I will say, the the piece the the the, the panel that 
got the most out of me, like, where I was like, oh my god, was that panel where Sonic, um, like, bumps into the giant robot that had the crab robot that has tails in, it, in it, its claw, and when he bounces off of it, doing no damage to the robot, but doing damage to himself, mm-hmm. rings pop out of him. <laughs> uh, the things I'll say, I'll steal a line from your book, Gareth, um, both of the cover issues, I really want those as big posters, because mm-hmm. they look incredible. Um, a deep cut reference I really like in the panels they released, you know that big like snake robot thing? There's yeah. like a grid on the ground, and it's basically that snake robot from Rystar, that first boss. <laughs> so I don't know what that has to do with Sonic, but that's a really cool reference. So no variant covers. They were too busy giving twenty five <laughs> yeah. to be- if one of the issue one. You know what? Thank God. It's nice to just have one issue, not twenty five for twenty five Sonics. Fuck. <laughs> Sonic says we'll keep it to that. <laughs> God damn. If it ever comes back. If it ever comes back. It's coming back. It's dead, Jim. Uh, <laughs> Next up is a quick one. Speaking of 25, um, how do you say it? Is it Joypolis or Joypolis? Joypolis. I think it's Joypolis. Joypolis. Joy- no, Joypolis. Yeah, Joypolis. Joypolis. See, there's no O between Y and P. That's what trips me up. It's a <laughs> Japanese name. Yeah. So, um, Japan's 25th anniversary event at Jogara is being held June 25th. <laughs> um, Dribble up. The only reason I'm mentioning this is they confirmed they'll have a live stream of the event, which I don't think is entirely typical for the mid year celebrations they do and i don't think it's going to lead to any announcement but we may get a tease well we'll be too busy doing the great sonic adventure debate at that point oh yeah yeah fuck we should mention that <laughs> synergy so if you're um around too many games and uh, from prince of philadelphia is in what, yes is it in philadelphia or is it near it's in, it's in philly Okay, so no, it's out. It's outside Philly. What was in Philly? It's like a suburb of Philly. Oh, that, that counts. Okay, so yeah, we're having a the great Sonic Adventure debate. Gareth's moderating. I'm arguing for say one. TJ's are fighting an uphill battle. Uh, <laughs> games enlisted from. I don't some know of, about that. Games enlisted from some of our recent LPs. He's also on the wrong side, and we'll, um, as far as I know, have some call me Johnny on the correct side. Um, I don't. Know what day or time or location? If you know, Gary. Saturday. It's going to be on Saturday, twenty fifth, three thirty p.m. in panel room three. There you go. Okay. Bring your tomatoes or throw it, TJ. Yep. Just yeah. at me specifically. And if you can't make it to that, we are looking to have that recorded. So we should do. Yeah. Barring any, uh, barring TJ's camera exploded, we should be able to get that recorded. Yeah. So Way to go, Gareth. <laughs> that should either be um, interesting time or a horrific train wreck. Both. Speaking of horrific train wrecks, uh, rest in peace, Sonic Runners. Oh, yeah. As of now, you can no longer buy Red Star Rings in the, uh, I almost called it an app, the game. And the servers go offline on July 27th. Uh, in recent times, the game has been considered a failure by Sega Networks, so it makes sense why they'd can the game. Um, we never really talked about Runners on the show, and I don't really know what either of you think about the game anymore. Yeah, there's a reason why we didn't talk about it. Because it fucking sucks. I, I didn't mind it. It was it's it's bogged down by stupid decisions, like having always be online, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. I mean, I I mean, on all the ads. I mean, like all the other game, like Sonic's like, easily his most successful app game is the original Sonic Dash, over like a hundred million downloads or what have you. Mm-hmm. All of those games developed by Hardlight. They have in-game like um, adverts and shit, but they give you an option, two, three bucks, and they they remove forever. Yep. I would have gladly paid up to five bucks in runners to be like, get the shit, you know, like stop the fucking ads every yeah, time. And, I agree. And keep it offline. Like I get the, 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 the uh, online for these those things serve a purpose, but if you're like, on a bus or a plane and you want to play runners, you can't. Unless you use your cellular data, which why would you? Because it's just a fucking shitty game. <laughs> it's you know, I actually think of, of all of the the app games, that's the game I enjoy the most. I think it's, it's the best game. I should clarify. I enjoy it the most. I don't enjoy the trappings. If those trappings were gone, it'd be one of my favorite. It is favorite. the best game in the shittiest service. Yeah. Of all of them. Yeah. Um, I'm just not a fan of the whole system on how to get new characters and stuff. That was all bullshit too. Yeah, yeah. really, really not. I only ever really saw. I mean, I unlocked a bunch of them, but they they all haven't played the same. I got classic, and that was about all I needed. Well, it's yeah. like all of all of the speed, like all the speed characters play the same essentially. You know, mm-hmm. like some of the flying ones differ here and there, but not they like Knuckles is terrible. His like double jump thing gimmick is just fucking abysmal. I, I forget. Is it jump, dash forward, then it leads jump into again. a jump? It's, yeah, yeah. It's like that was a dumb way of doing things. I will say, I really enjoyed how runners um, managed to tap on so many. Uh, what's the word? Like references throughout the series, like mm. chips there, Mephilus, um, 
Shara, like you know, Knuckles, Knuckles says damn again. They put they put back swearing in the <laughs> Knuckles says damn. Um, the orca is a buddy from Sonic Adventure. Like just the dumbest. The death There's a hunk of meat. Like anything you can think of, it's in there. So I'll send you straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wish, um, you know, they'd make an offline version or something mm. where it's just like because I enjoyed the core gameplay even if it was very repetitive. Um, but amazing soundtrack great soundtrack totally go go there's two volumes on itunes and like the apple store on like amazon go and tell me your tinny so fucking good go mm-hmm. and download that soundtrack it's amazing mm-hmm. yeah r.i.p runners you probably won't be missed i'll miss the soft launch version before it got mega bullshit that was the most fun i've had with the sonic mobile game ah <sighs> but alas next up sonic boom fire and ice yeah, is baby. getting an air quote launch edition for its release, um, Sega's been doing this a lot with their recent games like Valkyria Chronicles Remastered or that 7th Dragon 2020 VFD or whatever the hell that's called. Sure. Those got much better things. Um, Valkyria got like a steelbook. 7th Dragon's getting an art book. Um, Fire and Ice is getting a air quote collector box, which is probably like the Kid Icarus Uprising box for anyone who listens who got that. And it comes with three episodes from Season 1 of Sonic Boom, currently the only way in these states... To get any episodes on DVD, yep. Um, I don't think wow. I don't think this edition is being offered in Europe, but in Europe you can buy volumes of the show, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah, um, you're getting the Shadow episode, which was the series finale, right? Yep, it takes a hedgehog to defeat a village. village. No, it takes, it takes a, a village. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, yeah, my thing was dumb. And then you get the Metal Sonic episode. It wasn't me; it was the one-armed hedgehog. And an episode titled "Chili Dog Day Afternoon." Left parenthesis. I hope Gareth remembers which one that is because I don't. Right parenthesis. Based on the name, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it's the one when Knuckles enters a chitty dog a chitty like cook off. It's really dumb. It's, that make sense. it's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun episode. Yeah, so until um whoever's in charge of distributing the show announces a thing, that is the uh, only way. Mm, I think the when so, um, when uh, Sega posted that blog post saying, Hey, if you have episodes of Sonic Boom on YouTube, we're gonna politely ask you to take them down. Please do so. Um in the comments section people were like, What about DVDs? And they were like, We're working on it. Like, okay, you know. mm-hmm. that's good. Um, I want Blu-rays. Fuck David, I want Blu-ray. Yeah, me too. Same. Thank you. Uh, next, it's a damn good animation style deserves Blu-ray quality uh, distribution. He, he, he's a blue hedgehog. <laughs> Jesus, all right. <coughs> Sorry. So next up, um, also regarding the fire and ice. I'm bringing this one up just to get your guys' opinions on it. Um, on Steam, <laughs> fire and ice is on Steam. <laughs> No, um, it also saw a trailer a day short of a year past its last and, I think, first trailer. Really? Yeah. Um, a day short of a year since Damn, the, son. Yeah. Some viewers noted some graphical changes, but due to the fast, choppy nature of the trailer, it's hard to discern any noticeable improvements or changes to gameplay. As we record this, we are days before E3, so hopefully... Well, actually, by the time we release this podcast, that'll all be out in the wild, but... Hopefully we will know how we feel about it. Um, well, are they going to review anything? I imagine they're going to do like another trailer. This is no, I'm thinking like trailer. People, people playing it, recording like straight yeah. gameplay or. It's weird. The kind of like the first trailer. I was it, it, like when the first trailer dumped, and I said this a few times, and I've been proven um, uh, wrong in this regard. <laughs> I, I assumed in the first trailer, all of that that CG was like original. They'd used the French production company to make cutscenes for the game. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they were just scenes from from the TV show. Same in this one, like they have all these cutscenes, all these like CG footage, but it's just cuts, it's just clips from the show, which is like why, like I, I get that it's it's set in the, you know it's the Sonic Boom branding, what have you, mm-hmm. um, but so much of of the new trailer and it's it, it the original one was, was like I want to say it was like a, a good minute and a half. This one's roughly a minute, yeah, and most of it is just like like flashy titles and and clips from the cartoon. There's maybe. 15 seconds of footage of the game. It's a trailer for a game that ties into a kid's show aimed at kids. That's the main thing I took away from it. It's and, not for me to judge. It's more for kids to and, and, see and, and, and that's bug fine, but It's weird that they, they've pushed it. Well, see, it's weird that that's the way they re-debut the game after a year of skepticism. Well, it's also uh, because they, they've confirmed they pushed it back to prove it to make sure that they didn't have a... Which, again, I like Shadow Crystal. It wasn't a perfect game, but it was it was of the... The smoke... I would say of the 3DS hand of the 3DS handheld games, it's probably my favorite um, of all of them. Um, Generation has been a very close second, um, 
Much better than Lost World 3D, as we don't talk about that game. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, but when they confirm it, you know, multiple times that they push it back to make it, to make it better, do the stuff, it's like, why, um, why not? I mean, I, as, you, I know, as you said, I know it's, it's done to market the children, but yeah. like, you'd think they should, like in the, they didn't do a great job of it, but in the first trailer for episode two, back when, when I you know what, I, I always forget who's the fake one, and no, so who's the real one? And who's Skyler's impression? <laughs> Ken is real. Ken, Ken okay, is so fake. Ben, yeah. Ben Ken was was like um, Ken. You know, Ken, Ken Ballow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ben, I hate you, Skyler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you know, they, they put things in the trailer to try and quote some criticism of episode one. Yeah. So they had they showed him going slightly faster when he rose down the hill and a few things like that. Yeah. Um, and this one didn't really show anything new. It was just like. Again, I, I think it looks fun. I think, you know, the core uh, mechanics, and they've said they've taken out, like, the, um, it's not going to be as Metroidvania-ish. You don't have to, have to collect, you don't have to, like, yeah. unlock get crystals to unlock levels. Streamlined. It's going to be more of a, of a streamlined Sonic game, so I think that, that, that sounds fine. Um, yes. You know? I agree. Although, you know what, they did, I think, I think, I think there was one clip that was from the game in terms of CG because it was Sonic running around, like, ice running around the fight, Amy with a hammer hit it down. Which I don't remember that happening in the show at all. It's either from season two or is made just for the game. I think. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are a few cutscenes made for the game, especially. Yeah. What I thought you were getting at with the Ken thing, I thought you were going to mention that beard he made of Tails' as Tails. I'm like, I don't know where he's going with this, but I like that he's yeah. bringing this up. No, the best one was Skylar's Metal Sonic beard. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Skylar. You bastard. Oh, fuck off, Skylar. Yeah. Um. So next up, we know the uh, contents of that CD we mentioned last month. The two CDs and the one DVD. These are the tracks, I think, handpicked entirely by June. Um, yep. There are two discs. There's the... This is very Japanese. This is the. There's the blue disc, which is to highlight the feeling of going fast. And there's the black disc, which has shadow on it, that emphasizes the edge of Sonic music. So, yeah. So, um... <laughs> June, I love you, but why? <laughs> I, I, like I said, that is so, his answer. <laughs> that is my answer. Yeah, the edge. Uh, so we figured, uh, since we've already, you know, why not just go ahead and go over the track list? It's very standard. On the blue CD, um, take a guess. What's number one? Green Hill Zone. Marble Zone. Marble Zone. I wish. It's uh, Green Hill Zone. Sonic Two Special Stage. Why? Sonic Three Special Stage. Why? Uh, take a guess on how else they represent Sonic Three and Knuckles. Just you know, think about it. What else would they pick? Sky Sanctuary. That, that Lava one. Reef? Really? Yep. Um, palm Tree... Man, not character select theme? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, uh, that's amazing! <laughs> palm Tree Panic, I'm assuming Japanese, Sonic Good. City. Yeah. Can You Feel the Sunshine? Yeah. Uh, Mount Red, A Symbol of Thrill, the one with the saxophone. do 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 Yeah. <laughs> This is this one's random even to me as a chow lover. Join us for Happy Time, the chow garden music from SA One. <laughs> it, do- sure. it doesn't matter. Version two from Passion and Pride. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm or gonna, wait, or is that just? I'm gonna guess that's just the SA Two version. Oh, okay, okay. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. that's that. They call that version two. No, uh, uh, that's my fault. He calls it Remix Two K Fourteen. Yeah, for the one so. he made specifically for Passion and Pride. Uh. That's the way I like it. That's Metal Harbor, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, fam. It's really hard to go wrong with that. Uh, Neo Green Hill from Sonic Advance 1. That's a good choice, I think. Kind of a- atypical. Wouldn't know. Um, the shortened Sonic Heroes opening song, like the minute long yeah, yeah. cutscene. We can. Why? What that, that is like one of, of the, all the, the music, worst songs, vocal songs in a Sonic game. Of all the music you could pick from Heroes, you'd use a shortened Heroes and We Can. Look I bet down below. I bet Gareth is more disappointed that uh, this CD doesn't feature the, um, the, demo, the demo version of Sonic Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> or Johnny just scats. It's oh, beautiful. <laughs> it makes more sense than the final song does. <laughs> We may be able to provide a slightly in the know. I don't know if we've ever mentioned it, but apparently June really hates releasing demo versions of his music. Yep. So He mentioned that at uh, he's only, he, Humicon. He's only year. done it yeah. twice. And I think with that Sonic Heroes one, it was only because they kept pestering him for a demo for mm-hmm. Mega Collection or whatever. So that's a fun little fun well, fact. He really said that, but on his, on his MySpace page, he, <laughs> he put up a... I used to have it. I might have it somewhere. He put up a demo of Night of the Wind. Mm-hmm. Um, when it, 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 it's like using like it's like him using like uh, basic guitar stuff. It's using like a keyboard synth for like Johnny singing mm-hmm. and like a few mm-hmm. notes here and there. Because apparently he would make, he said he would write like five different songs ideas, and he sent to Johnny and be like, "I like this one. Let's use this one." 
Oh, type of thing. Hmm. So interesting. I would love a CD full of his demos, but he, as he said, like, he's like, I don't, he's not doing it. Yeah, he mentioned that to. Uh, I, it was actually Garrett that asked him the question at Umicon last mm. year about the demo thing, and yeah, you were David because him and I were talking about that last week. David asked some. David asked something about that, and I followed on oh, okay, by yeah. asking the no, because David asked about demos and Junshin he's like he doesn't like it and my response was in Sonic Mega Collection they use this and he was like <laughs> in the, in and he was scratchy like, seat he was like oh you need to scratch you around <laughs> so uh, next up from Sonic 06 it's the Mach Speed version of Wave Ocean the inlet, the inlet. yeah that's one of my favorite tracks of all time in Sonic Music that's a really good track hmm. um, next up Theme of Metal City which is the first track from the first Sonic Riders really good track good track yeah pretty good um <laughs> A new venture. La la. From Sonic la, Rush la. Adventure. Surprised there's no Sonic Rush 1 track. Um, Windmill Isle Day from Sonic Unleashed. Yep. Rooftop Run Day from Sonic Unleashed. Yep. Pretty good choices. Uh, yeah. Short version of Reach for the Stars. Yeah. Korean yeah. Park Act 1. Pleases me. Bit of an odd choice. I would have gone for like... Uh, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for a uh, Tropical Resort. Tropical Resort Planet Wisp you is what your, I thought. You didn't hear Tropical Resort. It's such a good track, it man. It's a good track. Or Asteroid Coaster. I, uh, you should <laughs> Um, Escape from the City, the Cash Cash remix, aka uh, classic yep. oh, from Generations. Yes. Seaside Hill Act Two. I already saw that one coming from Generations. I'm surprised he didn't do Speed Highway. He loves his yeah. uh, Speed Highway. <laughs> uh, Windy Hill, um, Zone One. Love it. One of my favorite tracks from yeah. uh, Lost World. Pretty good choice. Um, oh shit, that's right. Some of these haven't been released on CD before. I forgot to note that because this image is really small. But next up is the main theme for Sonic Boom: Rise of Lyric, which or is it's called there. Main theme of Sonic Toon. Yep. Which is really interesting to me. Um, and the last track, also never released on CD, uh, Beyond the Speed of Ellipses, which is... The main theme of Runners. Yeah, the main theme do, 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 of do, Runners. Do, do, do. Well, it, that's been released, though. It's the main theme of Sonic Boom has, hasn't been released anywhere. Well, I mean, Beyond, this is the first the, time they've on CD, is what yeah, I Yeah, but, but I mean, like, like uh, Beyond the Speed of has a digital release. The Sonic Boom soundtrack has yeah. nothing. Yeah. Which, I'm surprised they even put that on there. I'm surprised they included a track from Sonic, uh, Sonic Boom. Yeah, I like it though. That's like when when we saw that teaser. You you said oh, it's the soundtrack any good? I would say the main theme is probably one of the better tracks on that um, mm. soundtrack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was squinting my eyes at this image. I think those two are the only ones on the blue selection that haven't been on CD. So now for the black selection, a little racist. Oh God, that was just the blue side. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, originally we thought, because of a mistranslation, there'd only be 25 tracks across, across two CDs. Yeah. Which I'm, I am glad there's, there's um, not. Yeah, yeah, true. So, Although, not, hold on. Would you, no. before we move on to the black side, I would say, do, do we think that that does, um, like, personify the, the image? The of, speed? Yeah. Eh, I, I'm very perplexed by the uh, special stage choices for Sonic 2 and yeah, 3. Yeah, you don't go fast. Those. And it's weird because June has gone on record multiple times saying that Emerald Hill is one of his favorite tracks. Yeah, and uh, I don't. I believe it's not. Even, it's not on Black Side, so I'm very surprised Emerald Hill wasn't on there. Mm. It, it, the Sonic Free sp- Special Stage. I mean, if, I mean, uh, I'm gonna. Because yeah, like Blue Sphere isn't that great of a track. I, boop, 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 boop. I would know because all you ever hear is. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I feel like on paper it's a very good selection. But if you pay attention to Sonic soundtrack releases, these are all very typical. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not familiar with the 20th anniversary selections. Were they very similar to this? Because I feel like these tracks are just so familiar. But I'm also so deep into Sonic that every track is familiar. You know, I, I, I think I'm trying to. Th- you know what? Because like I, I wouldn't say the Chow Guard from SA One, or maybe that's the race music. I wouldn't say that embodies the speed of the Sonic series. No. Or the edge, <laughs> you know. I don't. I don't. You know. Go through black, and then yeah, I okay. can. I might be able to remember what was on the twentieth. Because there's some good tracks on black. So for the edge of the Sonic series, Scrap Brain from Sonic One. Yep, good track. Okay. Chemical Plant from Sonic Two. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. This one's interesting. Angel Island Act Two from Sonic Three. You see, I would think. I would think that Angel Island Act Two would more personify speed. Which, no, because no, uh, it's weird, because even though it's called Act 2, you actually hear it. Yeah, Act 2 starts playing halfway through Act 1 after Angel Island has been set on fire, which is pretty edgeworthy. I guess. <laughs> so ow. For, for, for my, for ow, the burning. You know, I, I, I think that. Also, Angel Island Act 2 is pretty bitch and track. Yeah, I like, I like Angel Island. I like it better than... I think what you were thinking of, TJ, was like the urgency sense. Yeah. Of like, oh, everything's on well, fire. Well, the tempo, the tempo's a little quicker yeah. than yeah. in, in a, Act 2. Then, um, mm-hmm. yeah. 
It's track four, uh, Death Egg Zone Act One from Sonic and Knuckles. I love. I think that's a really underrated like theme, the Death Egg theme. Yeah, I would. Sonic and Knuckles. I'd say that's a pretty good choice, just because yeah. it's not one you typically think of. Uh, <laughs> introduction featuring Open Your Heart. Love that track. SA One intro. Because you know that that is the most edge worthy because that's the track where June snuck in. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty um, edge worthy. It's true. Sky Deck of Go Go. Fucking A! Oh, wow. I would say maybe that should have been on the speed side, personally. Yep. But. Give a shit. Don't give a shit. That's one of my favorite yeah. tracks of all time. That's a really good track to have on. Um, Vengeance is mine. Oh, there's from, a shock. Yeah, Radical Highway. <laughs> I love. You know, actually, before, uh, when I was watching all that Generations footage from the, the, the DS. 3DS. The, yeah, 3DS. <laughs> um. <laughs> I really like uh, Radical Highway Classic. The track, yeah, yeah, by Cash Cash, yeah, it's really yeah. good. Yeah. I thought that was real, I, and I, but I didn't like Radical Highway Modern. See, yeah, I, 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 I kind of like that because they're doing something different. They're not just. I love them. I love the man. Yeah. But June Tsunoi's remixes of Emerald Coast are really lazy. There's, there's no re. They're just covers. Okay. You know, like they yeah. Circuit Freak tried did something different with Radical Highway Modern. Mm-hmm. So I I, resp- I I guess I say I respect it more than I like it. Okay, it's something different. So next track I will say, it's a pretty edgy track. They could have picked an edgier track. Um, it's the Sonic versus Shadow from SA Two. Could have picked Bio Lizard because that track is pretty much out of the edge, emo. So whiny. I guess that would be then for True Story. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, next up, I guess you really have to dig hard for edgy and heroes, but Rail Canyon. Maybe that. Aww. I would have gone for. Bullet, I would. I would have gone. No, I would have gone for. Um, Bullet Station. Final Bullet Fortress. Station or Final Fortress. Yeah. Final Fortress always sounded. Always sounded to me like like Whitey Carson music from Mega Man, but that synth. It was sounded like really badass Mega Man music. But yeah, that's a. It, but it, yeah, Real Canyon's an okay track. Yeah. So now we get to the obvious. It's I no, am all of me opening version. Yeah. 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 Is Westopolis in there? The very next track, Westopolis. I love Westopolis. West again, I love Westopolis. You know that's. That that's the only Sonic level track he put on um, the Works One. So yeah, he obviously is, is a big fan of that. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think. Yeah, that's that's probably the best track, honestly. That you could have picked for Edge. Um, oh yes, yeah, next track. up, theme of Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 E3 version. Oh, that's that, that that's, that's a good track. That's a good track. Yeah. Crisis City um, from 06. I'm mm-hmm. sure that's probably the whole seven minute piece. It's probably, yeah, it's probably, I mean, does it say what sections are used? Uh, the the Flames, Skyscraper, Whirlwind, Tornado. So that's all four for sequences. Yeah, yeah. So um, I really like Crisis City in 06, so I'm happy about that. That, that track's amazing. Sonic Speed Riders? <laughs> Would, is that the main theme? That's not edgy. It's not really edgy when the lyrics is, I'm gonna hit you with so. When half the lyrics is, it's just a guy going, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> Next up, one of my favorite tracks from Secret Rings, High and Broken. That's the one that plays on the Flying Manta Ray stages. Um, mm. I don't know how to put it out or like explain it. It's the one with the piano and the guitar and like the string section. I would have, uh, I would have uh, gone with I don't know, I can float because that, that that seems to be the one that everyone loves. That is a really good track. Or oh, Let the Speed Bend It. That's the damn good I love that. I'd say that'd be better for Blue Side personally. Um. Ungratify? That's the... That's the Zero uh, Gravity theme song. Yeah. N- next up, the Werehog Battle theme. <laughs> oh, Kerry's going to love this. You had to get that one in. Um, <laughs> Supersonic versus Perfect Dark Gaia. The only mm-hmm. track June performed on for Unleashed. He does the guitar <laughs> work on that track. Uh, With Me from... Uh, Black Knight. Well, that, yeah. That's a damn good... That's a damn good show. I would have either gone for that... Or Camelot Castle. So yeah. I think it's pretty edgy. Except for the, the fiddle breakdown. Two minutes in. Yeah. With me, I think that's the original version there. So It'll probably be yeah, the one with uh, the Tina and Emma from All's End. Yeah, and that mega death guitarist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Johnny in the background is going, face the day with me! Next up does not belong in this CD. Free opening version. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing edgy about it. Free I guess in the wind. they just love Watch that track. me fly. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. no. <laughs> um, Planet Wisp back to one. That How was that edgy? <laughs> where's Asteroid Coaster? Where, where's Asteroid Coaster? <laughs> Terminal <laughs> Velocity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nega Wisp Armor Phase Two. Fair enough. Good track. Good track. Um, the Generations version of the Metal Sonic fight. Fair Is that enough. Generation. When I just because the the timeline placement, it has to be generations. Oh, see, I I I I'm a I'm gonna think 
Because the other times CDs where it should be. Well, no, no, no. See, what I, what I think that is, and what I hope it is. Oh, episode two. Is episode two boss fight. Because, because Sonic, or there's a four and a Roman numeral two. two. Only yeah. because technically, uh, in generations, Metal Sonic is classed as a rival, and that track is called Rival Battle: Colon Metal Sonic. That is a. It's sad that I know that, but, but again, no, you're right. Metal Sonic's boss theme in episode two. Uh, it's sorry, very good. Episode two. One of my favorite. I think it's easily the best track in that entire game. It's so fucking good. It's good to get some Sonic Four in here too. Think yeah. about it because that is the only time. Next up, the Deadly Six theme. Fair enough. Good track. Ooh, good pretty track, good, track. good track. Um, and Theory of Attack. I think that's the boss music from Runners. That's the boss. Yeah, that's the boss theme from Volume One of the Runner soundtrack. Yeah. So um, I actually think Black Selection is, is the superior. It has more CD. In, more interesting yeah. tracks to me. Yeah. Instead of mostly first iconic stages, it's a little. A little more, barely a little more digs deep. Um, there's also, we know the contents of the you bonus know, I'm DVD. Say, did, Chris, before you do that, TJ, yeah. whip out your phone and look up the track list for the, because my phone's over there dead. Look up the track list for the 20th anniversary. So we can do a quick compare and contrast. But yeah, okay. Chris, what's on, the, what's on the DVD? So um, this mostly has uh, cut scenes and things called PVs from throughout the series. Pay-per-views. Pay-per-views. Um, I was talking with our friend David and we thought we had ascertained what pv meant i forgot so basically sonic cd opening adventure one opening adventure two pv promo video maybe because we were thinking maybe that was the e3 trailer Ooh yeah because if that's what that is that's really interesting um sonic adventure 2 battle opening heroes pv um shadows opening riders is opening 06 is e3 trailer secret rings is pv <laughs> i mean it's Stuff like that. Zero Gravity TGS trailer, Sonic World Adventure opening, Sonic and the Black Knight TGS trailer. Uh, I like that they make a note. Colors is either with or without the U, but they spell it both ways. Opening, Free Riders opening, Generations PV era one, two, three. I'm guessing those are the three era trailers. Yeah. My deep down hope is that they're releasing more of the CG, but mm. they may not have ever made more. Yeah. Um, Lost World PV and. The Rise of Lyric slash Sonic Toon PV. And that is the bonus DVD, Region Locked to Europe. Ah, through the power of editing, I'm here to give you a note from the future. Uh, I just said in the podcast that that uh, DVD was Region Locked because that's what the Amazon Japan description said, I believe. But um, after we recorded the show, the the exact morning after, uh, June made a post on Facebook saying that DVD is Region Zero. So, according to him, that should work in any DVD player or anything that plays DVDs. Um, thanks, and back to the show. Japan is somewhere It'll else. work for me. I keep getting the 20th anniversary of Sonic CD. <laughs> uh, what was it? It wasn't True Blue. No, True Blue was the compilation. Because um, there was that one was like the first level selection CD. Then I think there was something first, else. History, in, when Generations came out, Japan released two CDs, History of the First Stage, like white and blue, which is what became the free CD. In the Generations Collector's Edition European box set. TJ Talk. My, my throat's a little sore. <laughs> okay, well, my phone's dying. Um, they Jesus. Had, they had Green Hill, Emerald Hill, Sonic, you could do anything. Two Sonic Warrior. Oh, that's Two Sonic Warrior? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Toxic Caves, Angel Island, Flying Battery, Midnight Greenhouse, Green Grove, Supersonic Racing, Open Your Heart, It Doesn't Matter, Run Through the Speed Highway. Live and Learn, Escape from the City, That's the Way I Like It, Neo Green Hill Zone, <laughs> Leaf Forest, Sonic Stage, Sonic Heroes, We Can, Seaside Hill, Route 99, Right There, Right On. That's this one. Uh, I will say that sounds pretty different, actually, mm. hearing it all together. Um, this two, I Am All of Me, Sonic Speed Riders, Quick Trip to Paradise, His World, Kingdom Valley, My Destiny, Seven Rings in Hand, A New Venture, Race to win. Ungravitify? Yeah. No no, no one knows how to pronounce that, that name. <laughs> Endless Possibility, The World Adventure, Rooftop Run Day, Night of the Wind, Splash Hill, Free, Reach for the Stars, Starlight Carnival, Planet Wisp. I'm going to say, just based off those tracks, I actually think that 20th anniversary is a much better collection. I can understand. It, it, a lot of these ones, it just feels like June was like, here's what we did five years ago. We don't want to repeat ourselves. So mm-hmm. what do we have that's left that's still good? Still iconic. Yeah, Yeah. which, again, that's what I think. I mean, you're getting more for your money's worth on this one. You're getting a few more things. But I, I still think that 
that 20th anniversary one is probably the, the better selection of this is the best of the best of Sonic music. It has some deeper cuts too. Like it had some Rivals music. I forgot that existed. Um, and uh, Knuckles Chaotix. Knuckles Chaotix. Um, I think Advanced 2 and, and 3. 3. Yeah, yeah, because Route 99 is 3 and Leaf Forest is 2. Yeah. It so, had Rush and Rush Advent. It had Rush on there, which uh, which Rush is missing from this. Yeah. So, um, whew, those are CDs. I don't know how much of that will cut out, but... I'm surprised they put Night of the Wehog on that DVD. Yeah. yeah, you said that. I'm surprised, too, honestly. That would have been a really nice extra. Just because, like, I know I was whining about this on Twitter the other week, but it would be really nice to have that on a physical format. Like, but they, those do release. They, they'll well, do they're exist, out there, but, But like, they're promotional, yeah, Sega only. Yeah, like a way to give Sega money. For that, I guess, is what I'm thinking. Um, so the last news item before we get into the questions, uh, and well, we have something in between there, actually. Uh, once again, science point to July 22nd, the date of the 25th anniversary party in America, as being the time we'll finally hear about the next Sonic game, in response to a user on Twitter who asked, quote, how many chili dogs will it take for you to tell me when the new Sonic game will be out? The official account responded with 722, which aligns with July 22nd. So get ready to wait until then for more, kiddos. We still got... Oof, we're releasing this on Wednesday. Yeah, you still got about a month and a week to go. So get fucked. Yeah, hooray! <laughs> Sega, Sega doesn't like you at all, basically. My favorite thing on the uh, Sonic Facebook page, someone was like, Sonic, you know, new game trailer now! <laughs> so they just put like the Sonic One like they box art the on, Sonic, the, on their trailer. The Sonic Genesis GBA box art specifically <laughs> on a on a physical trailer. I was like, I think there you, you go, guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. So TJ, you wanted to um, set a your prediction for that game in okay. stone. Yeah, I officially, wanna, I want to set it in stone officially because I mentioned it to you guys, and we said you're wrong. <laughs> no, go on. Um, I think based on. All the um, new classic art. Yeah, all the new classic art that they've had going around, um, and so they they put out that image specifically. Where it was that meme where it's like you know, oh, all the six boxes, the thing. six boxes, yeah. and it's like you know what I'm actually doing, blah blah. blah. Um, they said, you know, you know, they're like like somewhere in this image is a teaser for um, the next game. The next game, yeah. And so, you know, you had all these people, you know, the ones with the tinfoil hats. Being like, Me, basically. <laughs> just like... There's a couple of squares in the background that look like a, a three. three! SE three confirmed! But, um... But, I, you know, every time every time they've mentioned that, you know, somewhere in this image there is a teaser for the new game. It's all classic Sonic. It's just going to be a classic Sonic game. That's all they're saying. They're not like, you know, this is the title, or this is... It's all been images of classic Sonic. So it's going to be another game in the classic Sonic format. Hmm, interesting prediction. Sonic Adventure 5, you think? <laughs> Sonic Adventure 5? <laughs> uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 5, rather. <laughs> Fuck it, it's merged. It's merged both sides of Sonic Adventure 4. My favorite. Actually, I don't think... My favorite thing would be if they released Sonic Adventure 5 and there was some pop-up at the beginning. It's like, this needs save data from SA3 and SA4 to hmm. work. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, it's just Sonic on the moon of a machine gun. Like, if you play <laughs> SA4, you know the drill. <laughs> I really don't think that it'll be... I think it'll be a new... Like, there's really no reason to continue the numbering, don't you Don't you think? Yeah. You already soiled it. Why keep... I mean, yeah, the I Sonic, like, I like Sonic, Sonic 4, 4, Sonic, I mean, Sonic 4, whether it be a good game or not, uses a, it has a negative, modern Sonic model. And it has yeah. a negative connotation, too, if that's the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's true, that's true. I guess. So I think, and my hope is, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I brought this up on, on, on here before or on some other format where we were recording. We might I, have new listeners. I hope it's, that, that it, even if it might not be this game, I hope eventually they will use the classic Sonic engine from Generations. I really liked that classic Sonic. I thought they used the classic Sonic engine from Generations 3DS because he's closer to classic Sonic than... In terms of the physics? In terms of the physics, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have any other predictions? You could do a wild card and get it right and feel really cool. I can't remember what was... Was it my wild card? Sonic Rivals 3. (laughs) 
for PlayStation Vita. <laughs> are you talking? Are you talking about my Dream Sonic game that actually, like, I had an actual dream about the other day? No, like accessory predictions to your main one that are so wild it could happen and you'd feel smart, but it still relates to your prediction. Are you like? Are you alluding to aspects one that I, aspects of the game? Are you are you alluding to one that I told you about? The one you just mentioned. Like, do you have any other predictions with that? I don't remember what it... Or is it just broad... It's a fucking classic Sonic game, you idiot. Like, what... You what? wanted to bring this up. I know, but I don't remember what I said. Dude, you... Just don't... now. He's... Chris is asking in what, any details about that game. Like, what do you expect this to be? Because, yeah, you can say, Aside like... from just being a classic Sonic game, what do you expect to be in it? Yeah, like, details. Oh, good work, TJ. Jesus. I predict it would be a classic Sonic game. You want to follow up on that? No! What am I supposed to say? <laughs> I brought it up yesterday. I don't know. I was just like, do you have anything else? Like, do you want to throw something out? Something weird. Like, like will Knuckles be in it? Uh, yeah, I think Knuckles. Will he be playable? <laughs> no, he won't be playable. Well, then fine, I want to play it then. Oh, well, yeah, have... he'll be playable. <laughs> <laughs> I love if that was like a fucking Facebook conversation on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Exchange my best little Zooka. Are you going to make Sonic the Hedgehog 5? Uh, yeah, maybe. Well, no one's be playable. No, I ain't gonna play it. Okay, he'll be playable. I'm sorry. Hey, you be be play the game. I'm so sorry, John. John. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I thought you were specifically you were waiting for me to say something, and I was like, I don't remember what I said. I was waiting for you to give some fucking context to your broad ass. Oh, that fucking context. I don't know. You didn't give any. Oh. So on to our questions, because. TJ gave the most broad prediction ever, aka there will be another Sonic game. I said there will be a Sonic game this year! <laughs> At this point, I don't think it's going to release this year. Sonic. See, that's exactly it. It could have been like, I don't know if it'll come out this year, but hmm, interesting. That could happen. No two you could feel, cut all this out. You could feel really smart when that happens. So into the questions. Well, I just said it, so there we go. Yeah, I'm going to delete it, but you just said it. Please do. <laughs> so our first question... Uh, our first email with questions comes from Digimon and Digimon 11. Digi Digimon, Digimon 11. <laughs> Digimon. De Digimon. <laughs> hey guys, it's Digimon. Guy from Twitter, Digimon is the champion. How are you? I am awful right now. Thanks for asking. Yeah, stuck with Chondra. Number one, <laughs> if Nintendo <laughs> Sega stopped the Olympic series but wanted to keep the Mario Sonic brand, what would you like seeing them do? I know Gareth answered that earlier. I think there's one clear cut answer, and that's probably a pachinko machine. <laughs> We need a Mario and Sonic game with some erotic violence. God damn. <laughs> I'll send you straight to hell. I'm going to break I, every bone in his body. Then, then I'm, I'm going to kill, kill him. him. I, I'd like either a platformer or um, just uh, anything other than another mini game fest, you know? It's something I've seen brought up once before that I really liked. Something like the Mario and Luigi RPGs. Just with Sonic in it, you know. You know, you know what I want. You know what I want. Super Mario Brothers Z, the game. Oh, <laughs> Finally, canon. <laughs> um, TJ. Okay. I'm just. just, just <laughs> you can give me more than three seconds. You had since I read it. See, I kind of. Jesus Christ! Skip to the end, TJ. I guess I. Go I'd like a classic Sonic game with <laughs> Mario in it, since Mario can beat the levels. And West we Wevels? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, that I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, if they did have a uh, like an RPG game that was that that had platforming in it, which was like uh, Worlds Collide, but it was like Bowser and Eggman hmm. teaming together, that'd be fun. Yeah. And you can bring all the Capcom characters in for five minutes. Yeah, no, pretty good. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Oh, Thank well. you. Were you there? You weren't there for that one, TJ. Never mind. Um, next up, we do take uh, questions about FTCR. So, number two, besides editing, what would you say is the most difficult part about doing a LP? Working with me. Yeah. Uh, Fuck them. It's, uh, I would say it's a mixture of, of recording the footage, because I think we've all been hit by the recording curse at one point or another. Yeah. That can be annoying. Sometimes it's just, depending on, on the type of LP it is, sometimes it can just be arranging a time oh yeah most more so for the ones we do online versus the ones we do like in my basement you know like, yeah so it, like uh that's like, why you see a bit more of the uh live lps lately just because they're so much easier to the do. reason because yeah, yeah like i mean there's ones that we've done in the past like say colors took so long to get together because yeah. there were so many people involved and be like we're free this i think if i remember correctly 
we were going to record that back in December, but then Mia at the last second wasn't available on like <laughs> on like a Saturday. Yeah. So we had to push it back to like January or February or what have you. So that that can be, it's just finding time. I think the recording the LPs tend to go pretty smoothly, unless we have, I think maybe only once or twice we've had real bad technical issues, but normally it's original to be, last world run. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, but like normally, I think the editing is the editing. It, it's it's the most. This is going up Wednesday. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm going to spoil it. The, the, the Rwanda I'm editing currently that's going to be going up tomorrow. I'm going to spoil it here. It's DuckTales Remastered. I thought everyone. Um, it's the editing, it's like, it's, it's, it's the longest, but I've, I'm, I haven't edited an LP in a while because I've been, I've been busy with shit, unfortunately, but I'm having a lot of fun just, it's, a, it's the most time consuming part, but I think it's also one of the most fun. I wouldn't really say it's the most difficult. Hmm. Editing, it's, it's time consuming, but it can be fun. Like I've been putting, sometimes I put shit in there just to make, I know, I know people will laugh at it. Like, I showed Titi some stuff earlier that yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy about. <laughs> <watching, laughs> it like, oh, made yeah. me laugh for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. teacher? Man who does nothing towards anything in the UPS. He's, he's the Talon. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, his makeup's pretty difficult sometimes. I don't, sometimes he's just a diva to work with. I don't know. But, I, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've, I, I've edited one thing at this point, and it was just audio. And it took six months. And it took six months to, to do that. <laughs> Roger and Clank. So that was pretty tough, right? Yeah, now I'm sad. <laughs> um, I'll answer while you recollect, but... No, that's it. That's, that is my answer. That is my answer. Um, for me, editing is absolutely the most fun part of any of it. Um, the oh, most difficult part for me is hearing my voice back, because I am absurdly self-conscious and I hate myself. You know, I changed my answer. The worst part for me is also hearing Chris's voice while we're doing playback. Correct. Um, Gareth infamously mutes my audio track and crosses his fingers and hopes it works. <laughs> but, yeah, and especially, like, going back to old LPs, we've had Lost Lost World running. Um, well, it just finished up last week. Oh, my God. Like, just go back. <laughs> lost and Lost the World. Record yourself, then wait two years, and then go back and listen or watch it, and you will hate everything about life ever. That's, I actually, that's, actually really like that. That's the most difficult part that for me. Is good. Oh, what, Lost Lost World? Yeah. Did you I, remember to thumbs up and comment every video? I did. <laughs> you know what bums me out? I, I remember it. I remember that Lost Lost World LP we did. I remember we had in Lava Mountain, we had Clement and our friend Aaron. Mm-hmm. And I remember that part being really good. And that was the thing I was most bummed about. Like losing that Lava Mountain part. Oh. I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. But it's dead now. Someday so will we. Yeah. True. Next question. <laughs> Rip. Um, number three from Deji. If Sega, for whatever reason, decided to leave the gaming industry, for whatever reason, <laughs> and sold their IPs, who would be the best and worst owners for Sonic? I think Nintendo would be the worst. I'm just going to get this out here right now, because a couple... I want to say, like actually, like last year, a couple months ago, there was talk about... Star Fox Zero sucking, and it did? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> No, I I heard I don't even know what it was whether it was a rumor or a rumor or something or a fake article talking about Nintendo acquiring. Um, oh, that happens all the time. But Sega's dead and they're yeah, out of business. Okay, but anyway, so I'm I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about the way that I enjoy Sonic for the most part right now mm-hmm. is through alternative media, not strictly the games, mm-hmm. and. Nintendo is, at this point, rather notorious for keeping their IPs That's, playing I would, I would say at this point, they're, they've, they're starting to not do that. Cause they've, they've announced, they're starting to. They've announced they are doing movies and TV. I, I think, I, I get where you're coming from, and if, this, if we were recording this, say, six months ago, I'd agree with you. Yeah. But at this point, they've confirmed they're working on a theme park, Universal Studios. They've confirmed they'll be having movies. So I think if, they, if Nintendo were to acquire Sonic, I don't think they would change much in terms of his non-game appearances. I don't think they'd, they'd mess with the comic book or the TV shows. I hope not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I don't think that would happen. Yeah. Um, Who do you think would be the best, TJ? Just say Sega. <laughs> Sega. <laughs> They're dying, but they should keep them. Fuck. Well, I don't know. Hey, guys, it's just yeah. Sega backwards. Def- <laughs> definitely wouldn't be Capcom. Capcom yeah. hates blue characters. Capcom is my worst. <laughs> uh, That's the, your worst? Either them or EA, I think, would be the oh, worst. Oh, God. Every See, company sucks. <laughs> you you could play as Sonic if you buy the full game, but if you pay, if you want to spin dash, you gotta buy the P, the DLC the, downloads. The spin dash pack. <laughs> spin dash pack. If you want to do the homing attack, you gotta gotta buy the homing attack pack. God, 
if you want to play as Tails, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's already how it is. <laughs> in terms of, of best, uh, maybe Insomniac, just because they seem to hmm. they seem to you know know how to do platformers. You know, obviously, I, I wouldn't want Sonic to turn into a Ratchet and Clank clone, but you know, they know how to make platformers and they know how to milk the shit out of them. You know, <laughs> Sucker Punch, real realistic physics, rocket robot on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say Traveler's Tales, but I they I think oh. I think I think they just make Lego games now. I'm not yeah. even sure what other type of games that's, they that's, do. I think that's all they do, literally. Which they're good games and it's successful, so it makes sense. My worst is uh probably Konami. Just because they've shat on everything. I they thought have. that they were a thing. Yeah. Solid Sonic. <laughs> <sighs> no, that's Metal Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> um Naked yeah. Sonic. I mean Egg Boss. <laughs> We're talking worst here. Like, I think of all the ones that have been mentioned, they're all very extremely close in terms of bad. So it's not like they are majorly worse. But I would never want to see Sonic anywhere near Konami. Mm. As for best, um, hmm. see, it's tough because I want to say Nintendo, but they can't even keep their own fucking shit straight, like Paper Mario um, or Star Fox or Star Fox. <laughs> God, they to make the same game seven times in a row. Thank you. Insomniac would be interesting. Um, can I cheap out and say Taxman? <laughs> sure. Yeah, because I don't know like who else. Well, see the thing Sanzaru? about the thing about Taxman is he's done great. He's done great work with, with ports. I have no, with the exception of of his retro Sonic hat from a few few years ago. Yeah. I have no experience with his original work. I I don't put the man down. I wasn't the biggest fan of of Hidden Palace Zone. I, I didn't think that that meshed well with Sonic 2, really. I think it it, it stuck out like a sore thumb. In terms of level design? In terms of, of level yeah. design. Um, I don't think it fit. But again, I, I haven't seen him do an original game, which he could be amazing, but I mean, it, you know, it's your choice. That's fine. I, just I was that. just thinking in terms of like getting things, quote, right, and that he can also bring in other talent. Mm, but like, does he have any expertise in 3D? Because I, I don't want the series to go back to just 2D. I'd like uh, it in 3D. I was just thinking 2D, honestly. <laughs> Um, it, I, it's that or like Insomniac, I think. But even then, it's like, can they make a Sonic game? They can make a pretty one, if nothing else. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, eh. this would be a more. Let's just say Naughty Dog, so we can get three solid Sonic games followed by a kart racer. But we can't even get that anymore. Yeah, where's where's my Uncharted? The Fast of Us. Who the fuck wanted wanted <laughs> Uncharted three? No one. Fast of I mean, Us. Uncharted four. I think this would have been the more interesting question. Featuring Sonic's ass game. <laughs> if this was like Sega general property instead of just Sonic, but uh, I think we've answered that. So, yeah. moving on. Uh, Will wrote in again. Hey, everyone. Oh, he even says it in his email, so this is redundant. Will writing in again. <laughs> I apologize ahead of time for the slightly beefier email. I have questions about a certain black hedgehog, don't we all? Yes. Shut up. Oh, this one's actually kind of deep. That's right. Shadow's existence in the franchise has always been interesting to me. He's been... Oh, sorry. He's both a fan favorite and debatably a symbol of its decline. Yeah. When I ask people online what they think about Shadow kicking the hornet's nest, I know. <laughs> one guy said he thought Shadow was kind of cool but didn't fit very well in the franchise because of his grim origin story. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, he argued that Shadow is a massive tonal shift compared to the main cast, and I have to admit... <laughs> God. Reading some of the stuff and you remember, the aliens, conspiracies, and assassinations tend to make him stand out in the franchise that's aiming to be lighthearted. So, uh, what do you all think? What what would you change about Mr. Edgy the Hedgy? <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to see happen with him in Sonic Boom? Since the main ser- or since the series has kind of sort of given him a fresh start. So I think this is sort of how would you reintroduce Shadow? And to that I would say Probably uh, more aliens, more guns, mm. um, a <laughs> more, more bad swearing, language. a more colorful motorcycle. Um, yeah. <laughs> Personally, yeah. I kind of like I kind of like um, antithesis villains. That's because you like us too. As opposed, mm. or well, I guess not as opposed. Antihero. Mo- no, most most of the time the the because I know at this point it's it comes off as more of a trope than than actual like good storytelling, but. Usually, I tend to enjoy the antithesis heroes in, in, uh, instead of disliking them just because yeah. of what they are. Which, again, at that point, I did mean that. I'm trying to think of other franchises who did that. Because we talked last time about Metal Sonic being, you know, it's kind of a cliche, ro- you know, robot villain, you know, the main yeah. character. But I'm trying to think, 2001 era of video gaming, were there any 
like Mario, evil Mario. You know, I, I guess Wario, but Wario was aside from one game was never really a villain. Though I guess you could yeah. say the same for Shadow. But I mean, it's not it's not just in gaming. You know, the, okay, yeah. so like you have Venom and Spider Man. You have Bizarro. All kinds of anime shit. Probably. Yeah, there's a bunch of anime. Evil Ash and fuck one. Yeah, yeah evil, Ash. evil Ash. Evil Ash. Evil <laughs> Ash. Um, I I like I like Shadow as a character. You know what? I I hadn't thought about it in a long time, but uh, talking about yes, his backstory does, does not fit at all. at all, especially in the new kind of more Saturday morning comedic tone they've established since Colors. If um, they went back to that old style, I'd say it would probably fit more. Honestly, mm. yeah, that's I how would, a series used to be. But what, what I would or what I would do going forward is just what I guess Oh Six attempted to do was just ignore it. And just move and start fresh. He's um, just a guy that works for the military, you know. I would yeah. even... I would say you don't even need that. I mean, it works great in the comic book, but I, I would say you don't even need that. I, I can't really see them bringing back Gun at any point. Because um, that, that's... Gun and Shadow are like the uh, the uh, sticking points for the kind of like edgy part of Sonic's history type yeah. of thing, you know. I, the thing about uh, um, Boom is I was expecting them uh, before a Rise of Lyric came out... Um, because when I was expecting them to do something like simplify his backstory, like like just that like he was just like an evil experiment, you know, gone wrong. You know, you, you, yeah. you don't need Professor Joe to bottleneck. You don't need Maria getting slaughtered. You, you don't just need, have Eggman. Man. Yeah, like like Maria. It's, yeah, like just have <laughs> egg, like kind of like Metal Sonic. Eggman, you know, Metal Sonic came first, and Eggman just tried to try and clone Sonic yeah. and turn evil. Like you yeah, know, but didn't happen. Whatever. It's kind of just 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 have it like base. Yeah, I think that's fine. Oh, Mega Man! I think yeah. I thought he was going to say based on. I'm like, what, what? you know, base. You know, base. Chris, your brain did that thing again. Right? I, don't, <laughs> I don't know Mega Man. It turns it off and turns it back on. Pretty much. Base is probably yeah. <laughs> I would say before Shadow, base was that like that idea. Yeah. So Shadow's kind of a kind of ripped off base maybe. Uh, what I would change about Mister Edgy the Hedgy for one, I'd make him <laughs> more involved <laughs> than a cheerleader. That'd be one start for the main series. You got the sack. Um, having Shadow back, I think, does kind of necessitate more darker, serious... No, not darker, but more um, serious stories, I guess. So maybe... I don't know. I think wanting him more involved kind of necessitates more than this question asks. As far as Boom goes... I think the cameo was fine. Moving on. <laughs> I don't think if he comes back and sees, I don't think they'll explain anything. I think they'll just. I'm thinking the games too. Like, wasn't he involved in Shattered Crystal to some degree? Yeah. I think he had some Same ship. The world. You. That's right, he's literally you, you charlatan. <laughs> um, he's in he's in Shattered Crystal. He isn't given a backstory, but he has a he's he, his involvement in the plot makes more sense because hmm. he's he's on the mind he's on the lyrics mind control. Yeah. As far as what I'd like to see happen, I think they had a chance to explain it. They blew it. They didn't. So why bother? I think they should just keep it up. as like, oh, he's in this universe. He's just someone there. No need to go on too long. It's a different thing. Yeah. Um, speaking of going on too long, next question. From, uh, yeah, this is one of those comic questions that keep sneaking in. Good old, I don't know how to say this name. Sean? Sean? I won't say the last name, but. Hey, everyone. Big fan or big time fan. Smiley face thing. I wanted to start reading the Sonic comics. I wonder where to start or best sagas slash issues you recommend reading for new readers. And I think by saga, they mean arc, not mm, necessarily yeah. um, Sonic saga. Uh, obvious question is, uh, so obvious response to this is to start with um, the reboot. Uh, Countdown mm -hmm. to Chaos. Countdown to Chaos. Sonic Hedgehog 1, Countdown to Chaos. Start with that. The, in, the collected trade, in case you don't know much about comics. Yeah, yeah the, the paperback. paperback. Issue, yeah, there's, there's two volumes of that. With issue, volume 3 apparently coming out at some point this year. <laughs> That's a whole mess. Yeah, sure thing about comics. Um, in terms of just sp particular um, arcs or sagas, Wards Collide. I can't yeah. I can't recommend Wards Collide. They, they just released, to give them credit, the Wards Collide collected edition is a, re it's a really good value for money. Mm -hmm. It's a really good arc. Um, Genesis is, is, is a fun arc. Genesis is fun. Um, yeah. In terms of specific um, books and plot lines, a lot of universe arcs. I would I would recommend most universe arcs because they you can read them mostly any time you want. For one, they're pretty self contained. The, the only ones you might have trouble with if you haven't read anything is I would I would avoid Knuckles Returns and Journey to the East. Yeah, I think of all the universe arcs released thus far. Those are the two where you kind of need to have an experience with the comic book as a whole. 
Um, in terms of saga, you might not understand it all, but Eggman Empire is a pretty pretty fun um, Eggman. Like you, you might not get all of the the backstory, but it's just a fun Eggman versus Sonic storyline. Yeah. My favorite uh, of saga would have to be uh, Mogul Rising. That's a fun arc, but that's you kind of need to know back. I'm thinking, if there's, someone coming in fresh. I don't think there's that might some be the best. there's there's some stuff there, some like little Easter eggs, uh, some certain character mm-hmm. cameos specifically that 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 just make that arc for me. So and Scourge Lockdown. Oh, if you've read anything, just Scourge is an evil Sonic and he's in prison. So yeah. it's really all you need to know. If you're very receptive to new or quote recolored characters, yeah, Scourge Lockdown is it's a very an good read. Amazing arc. <laughs> I would say in addition to all the above, if you just want to jump in and get the book kind of at its best and you don't want any of the ones that have been stated for some reason, that Fighter's Arc in the post-reboot main series is really, really Champions. fun. That's a really, really fun arc. If you can arc. track down the champion issues, because yeah. that probably won't get traded for another six years, but yeah. <laughs> champion's a really, really good arc. I know on Archie's store, they collect some um, arcs. Mm. I don't know if those are in stock right now, but that is an option. They have sales all the time, so you can get them like half off. So, and I just saw from your title, you <laughs> said to go by Nassan or Nashan. So that's my fault for not seeing that part earlier. Uh, so I think we covered that pretty well. Um, yeah. Next question from Bluebore92 on Twitter. Number one, why do you do this? I'm not sure if they mean anything. The or podcast? Was pod- Chris, Chris wanted to do it. Yeah. This, and if he said no, he would have cried. Uh, yeah. Probably on recording, too. It would have been a much worse podcast. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, true. Number two, if the next Sonic game has multiple playable characters, who do you want in and who do you want out? I'd take Sonic out, obviously. <laughs> Knuckles and Tails. In really in. Mm-hmm. I love, oh. I love Knuckles. In terms of out, like I don't, I don't think uh... Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. Like, are these just in terms of a playable variety or just in yeah. general? Yeah, playable. I, I would, I would, I don't think we need, as much, I, I, I might like them as characters, but I, I don't think we need, uh, like, like, Silver or Blaze or the Chaotix for a while. Rouge. We, hey. Rouge. I like them as characters, but, like, I've been, it's been so long. If, if we, if we ignore Sonic Boom for a while, and if we ignore Runners and, and the Dash games, if we ignore all these games, if we ignore all these spin-offs, it's been it hasn't been since it's been ten years since we've had uh, like Knuckles and Son and Tails playable. Yeah, you know, uh, I guess you could technically include Black Knight. Uh, Black Knight was a, was a good example of that, but it's been ten years since we had a main series game where we've had like Tails and Knuckles play. Even Amy, like the core, give me the core four in a Sonic team game playable again, and and uh, I've gone of course big. I've got to have big. <laughs> No. no. Ah! I, I don't care. Still no big. I'll go. Um, I want Sonic Tails Knuckles. I, um, but I want re- character skins. That way I can still get Shadow, Metal Sonic, or anyone in. But just have them model swap. I don't need like specific skills at that who point. What would you do, though, aside from the hedgehogs? Like, you can't really swap anyone out. Like, like, who would you swap Tails out for? Rouge, Evil Tails? Rouge, Cream. Tails doll? Evil Tails. Rouge, Cream? I don't know. Just... Surely Knuckles would be a, be a rouge swap. Well, have you played SA2? No, she has wings. She doesn't fly. She's the fly she character flies. heroes. Her, we, her flight's dumb. It is. I don't know. It's just an idea. Jeez, sorry. It's a bad idea. Okay, TJ. I, I think he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, just no big, no Eggman. But everyone else? Every, especially the Chaotix. Okay. More mighty. Now you're onto something. <laughs> More Sonic Recolors. Less Ray. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> for Gareth, congrats on the baby. Thank you. Have you figured out a name for the future Family Scrub member? I have. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. No, we, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna call the Scrub Benjamin. I'm very happy about that, because that's my Yorkshire Terrier's name. Is it? Yeah. I'm going to change the name now. <laughs> Uh, next up, Jasper writes in, I got two questions for you peeps. Yeah. Yeah. Number one. Fist milk cracker. <laughs> Favorite era of Sonic game. You know, I don't, I don't have a... I like... Generally speaking, I've liked every era kind, you know. Like, there's mm. not... There's not like... There's specific games I don't, but I don't look... You know, you know what? 
maybe possibly the Heroes to 06 era. I, I, I kind of like Shadow. I don't think Shadow's... I think Shadow is a better game than Heroes in 06, but it's not really a good game. Mm. So if I had to put a gun on my head, it'd probably be the... the everything... In terms, of, in terms of the main canon, everything from Heroes up until the... Before Unleashed. So like Heroes, Shadow, 06, and especially Secret Rings. That's your favourite? So yes, yeah, Secret Rings is my favourite. I thought it was worst, least favourite. No, it's just what's everyone's favourite. Oh, fuck, my bad. I was, I was like, least favorite. I was like, I'm worrying so much about you what right now. What the fuck? No, oh, I'm an idiot. Everything, what the like everything but that. Yeah. No, to Chris, cut that out. Um, uh, I don't know. I'd like, probably colours to now. Because mm. I, I, when I was a kid, I wasn't like, I would get the games when they came out when I didn't know, when, I didn't know they were coming out. So I was like, oh, there's a new Sonic game. Yeah. Probably colours to now, because I've, you know, I've enjoyed, on the most part, pretty much all these games, you know. Yeah, I thought this was an interesting question because, you know, I'm just going by the generation structure because I'm assuming that's what they mean. Like, even what is generally my least favorite technically, because I guess if you include, like, Shadow and Heroes and Dreamcast era, because why not? Mm. Um, you've still got stuff like the advanced games and Rush. So it's tough for me, but I'd, I'd probably also go with um, Unleashed to Now, Modern mm. Era, is my favorite. Even though, like, Adventure 1 is very near and dear to my heart, like... But it's surrounded by SA2 and Heroes. Yeah. And 3D Blast. And, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, Mr. Man, he's played seven games in a 25-year uh, franchise. <laughs> What's your favorite error? <laughs> Who's finished maybe one? <laughs> yeah. Have you finished any Sonic games? I got the bad ending in Sonic 1. Fair enough. That counts as clean, it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, never beat Sonic 2. So, what's your favorite error? Actually, then? wait a minute. Hold on. Let me, let me answer your first question. Aside from one, no, I've never beaten a Sonic game. Oh wait, no, I, I beat Adventure One. I beat Adventure One. Good night, everybody, but not two. <laughs> What's your favorite era, you dipshit? Um, <laughs> probably the probably probably one and two. That the classics, is, yeah, cla- the classics that I've at least played. Classic nerd over here. Just because... Like Skylar Combat. Fucking retro. Well, that's how I got introduced to the franchise anyway. And that's where my... The, it's still my favorite aesthetic of the... Hashtag. The whole... <laughs> my Twix mix, calm down. The whole um, series. Is there another question from him? Yeah. I was just waiting for TJ to All finish right. up. Number two. What do you expect the live-action Sonic movie to be like? I feel like it's going to be uh, similar to the newer TMNT movies. Mixture of action and comedy. That good stuff. Do you mean Sonic's going to be an alien? That's oh. not... Well, Shadow's already one. Why not Sonic? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm. I think it's gonna be like a more tolerable version of the Smurfs. No, oh. just because yeah. the the writer has said it's not gonna be that way. But it's, unfortunately, the writer in in a big tempo movie like Sonic, which based on a big franchise, the writer were very little say on the finished product. Yeah, the script could be the best script ever written. But if the producers are like, we need more fart jokes here, we need, we need more stupid slapstick here, that's going to be injected, unfortunately. So yeah. Although Sega, uh, Bars of Planet being a, a production company gives me hope, mm-hmm. but because Sony are fronting the money and they're releasing it, um, I, you know, at this point it's it's far too early to, to even we don't even yeah, know we don't know anything. anything. So I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna see it, obviously, if it's if it's in line with Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, I'd be happy. That movie is so dumb, it's amazing. It's gonna be make Metal Sonic and Shadow the Beaver from Rocksteady. <laughs> <laughs> My I, man. I'm just I'm at this point. Everything that I've heard, every bit of news up to this point, I'm just like, no, thank you. <laughs> very <laughs> coloring the, in the bubble. Very not interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, different from expect. Best hope. It's like the Ratchet and Clank movie where non fans don't get it, and fans are kind of like, eh, all right with it that's my best case scenario and what i think could happen i expect it to not be good i expect it to um at best have a couple good moments and that'll be it Mm. i I don't have any hope for it unless they can turn it around but right now all we know is live action cg mix and that is not a good thing to hear ever nope next question comes from uh (laughs) professor jesus professor professor preston they did that just to make me say that fucked up. Hey, scrub boards. <laughs> the Sonic franchise. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, next question. <laughs> then the Sonic franchise is known for its oh quote beloved 
cast of characters, but lately the games have been centered around only Sonic, Sans Boom. My question for you is if you could if you could have Sega make a spin-off game featuring any Sonic character, who would it be and who would who would you like it who how would you like it to play? Oh, and Big the Cat doesn't count because due, due to his anticipated game, <laughs> BBFA3. P.S. I love you too, Jason Pie. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Like a minute ago, you were like, fuck this guy. Oh, you liked me now? You fickle piece of shit. Goddamn, yeah, want, goddamn I want, ego. I want, a, uh, I want a chaotix game. Sans Knuckles. Just the just the main three. So like a Knuckles Chaotix sequel kind of? Like that type of gameplay or like a regular Sonic game just starring the Chaotix? A regular Sonic game starring the Chaotix. Okay. Hmm. Uh I, I I think I think I like a Knuckles Chaotix sequel sans the Chaotix. I think Knuckles is a <laughs> interesting character. not with that not with the, the fucking the ring gimmick, but mm. I think Knuckles of all of the spin off characters. Because you try to shadow, do any work. Tails got two attempts. Didn't really work. I think of all of, of the, the other cast, I think Knuckles is, is the only one who I think you could uh, build a, a decent game around. The only thing I'm thinking about is, uh, what's that? Toad's Treasure... Tracker? Tr- tr- yeah. Toad's Captain Treasure Tracker. Toad's treasure, yeah. Captain Knuckles Treasure Tracker. <laughs> Gotta find the chaos <laughs> <laughs> Um, It's no use. It's Boom Knuckles. It's like, Gotta find the chaos emeralds. <laughs> yeah. As for me, I'd really like a uh, Sonic Rush spinoff with Blaze the Cat finally showing off more of her world other than it's apparently like Wind Waker and Flooded, I guess. Because we've only seen those islands. Um, I'd really like mm. to explore her world and her character since it's just kind of awkward for me to think about her because up until now she just warps through dimensions magically whenever they want her involved. It'd be really cool just to go to her world for a change. Mm. I know we're a little past um, Blaze being a relevant character in the games, but that's just how I would do it. And it's basically just Sonic Rush, more of that, you know. Uh, it's not a really interesting answer, but I think it'd be cool. I think it would work. Yeah. That, and she's one of the few, like, new characters who I think a lot of people like. Say new, she's 10 years old. <sighs> she's 12 years old, actually. Okay, that sounds a little weird. But I feel like she's 11. 2005 she came out. Oh, okay. My, that could have sounded much worse out of context. <laughs> um, Rob writes in. Hey guys, what I'd like to ask is, how did you guys first hear of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sat AM, and what are your favorite memorable episodes? And whilst... Okay, this is the second one's a bit more after you, this answer, so... As for me, um, I first heard about them, I think through Nostalgia Critic or something, hmm. and I have never followed up on them and watched them, so I have no answer. I used to watch uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog frequently when I was a kid, because... Um, I, well, I, I loved Sonic 1 and 2, and then, uh, you know, I just used to watch a lot of cartoons, and, you know, Sonic cartoon came on, and mm-hmm. I was like, what? There's a Sonic cartoon? And I just loved, just the love of, I loved stupid, you know, cartoon slapstick comedy and everything, and uh, I still to this day, my favorite non, like, game canon characters are Scratch Ground or Coconuts. Yeah, I remember, uh, kind of like TJ, I remember loving the, um, games. I remember watching, uh, the first episode of Adventure when it premiered in England. I remember me and my brother got up pretty early to watch it. Um, in terms of my experience with Saturday, I remember one day I just tuned in to watch, uh, Adventures, and Saturday was been playing instead. And I remember that, that intro, just like, I, I was seven, maybe? Mm-hmm. I thought that intro was like the coolest thing ever. It was like nothing I'd ever like. It was because like you're used to seeing Sonic in the games with like goofy slapstick. He dresses up like Roman and makes that robotnik. You know, was mm-hmm. confusing as a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like sat- the Saturday intro was just just really uh, you know. It, even I still think that holds up today. I think it's pretty. pretty I'll agree. Pretty I, intro. I, I for the first yeah. I saw it for the first time. I want to say one or two years ago. Was it Jonathan's bash at a party? It was because we showed you. Um, the episode where Uncle, Uncle Chuck, Chuck and you start, yeah, he started getting weepy eyed. Um, <laughs> in terms of favorite episodes and moments, in terms of adventures, um, I love the uh, Quest for the Chaos Emeralds arc. Really good, uh, just because Robotnik makes mention of the fact that Sonic murders things, which I, I didn't like as a child. <laughs> as fast as you can kill them, I can bring them back to life. Why, why is Sonic murdering things for? <laughs> I like this. Um, Robotnik's rival, great episode. Tells his new home, great episode. Um, 
even the first episode, Super Sonic Smash, smashing the uh, Search Squad, Love Six Sonic, great, great episode. I do like. Love Six Sonic's one with Breezy, right? Breezy, yeah. Breezy yeah, Breezy I actually I like that episode a lot. Uh, Sat Sat M, um, uh, Blast of the Past, Two Parts, Fantastic, Doomsday Zone, uh, Game Guy, Drew Henge. Most of Sat most of Sat M season two, except for the Antoine episodes. Um, I think is it's pretty much just one continuous arc, which I think worked really well. Hmm. Any any uh, Sat for Sat M for you two? I've never watched that. I've only seen a couple episodes of Saturday AM. Well, for Avengers then, what stands, what memorable parts for um, Avengers are there? I will say, I specifically, I remember the Christmas episode the most. So the Christmas Like, I don't, I don't remember... More chimneys! I don't remember... More! <laughs> I don't remember specifics. But I do remember that was, that was usually part of my... Christmas, I guess you call it ritual. To watch Sonic Christmas Blast. Yeah, I always, I always tuned in to watch Sonic. Even Christmas though he Blast. calls it an extremely Sonic Christmas in the episode. <laughs> I guess my addition can be now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I watched a lot of adventures on Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube poops in middle school, <laughs> so that's my knowledge of the cartoon series. And yeah, Give myself a promotion. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Dr. Robotnik. They continue on to say. While well, still on the subject, have you ever considered doing a commentary, and I assume maybe commentaries, on those shows for FTCR? Thanks. Hopefully we can meet you at TMNG. Uh, Rob. TMNG? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Too many games. No, you said TMNG. You added an end to that. Oh, well. Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Games. games. <laughs> um, in terms of, of the commentaries, we've actually done them. Me and Torch did a bunch of them. <laughs> Fucking Dinosaur Age. Yeah, we, we did them all for like... Uh, Adventures, I am Underground, X. Um, oh God! Uh, the the OVA. We did it for every series apart from Boom, which wasn't out yet. Wow. Yeah. Um, Are you uh, saying you did like every episode or just? No, we did a. S- select episodes. Oh, from, oh from, okay. from every, oh, no, we did Jesus. No, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No, that's no, no, we did select episodes from every series. Um, we're gonna. That's on. That's on on the big big to do list of to get things back up and running, but. Uh, you know, we, we toyed with, before I came out, we toyed with doing commentaries for Boom for every episode. Like me and Jonathan, and I think you, TJ, talked about doing that for a little bit. Um, but then we got behind and that became like the Sonic Shows thing. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there's no point in us doing it as well. If you wanted that, go with what Sonic Show um, comedy on it. Maybe it wasn't time has passed, though. I don't know, we, we have different voices to yeah, them. You know, I think we probably maybe, maybe do. I'm TJ. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you know, probably not every episode. But we might, we'll episodes. probably do some select episodes at yeah. some point. Um, but yeah, I'd like to do that. Uh, yeah. So Goldstorm O Seven again, writing in just two queries. Is that how you say it? Queries. One question a year, Query. please. Moving on. One question a year. Don't say that. One question, please. We're running out of questions in a month. Um, one. I think it's safe to call you guys fans of the Sonic comics. Wrong question two. No. From each of you. <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you, these comic questions, it's like they're not listening. From each of you, what is one character from Sonic Comic Universe, Archie, Fleetway, or otherwise, um, Tails Gets Trolled is my addition. That, that, that you <laughs> Daffy think, Duck from Tails Gets Trolled. That you think would best work with one of the games. Uh, Necromancer Elmer Fudd from Tails Gets Trolled is pretty good. Um, for like a comic-only character? See, I'm not sure if he means comic-only character, or maybe like the comic personality adapted into the main game. If it's even. a comic personality, then... Totally Fleetway Sonic. He's just a big prick, and I love him. I love him. So there's there's an episode where like he he's getting he's caught by like this giant robot, this giant stone like machine, and he's like in the the grass of it, and he's like, I'm, I'm not gonna make it, Tails. Help me, help me. And Tails, I'm gonna get help you, Sonic. And he like pretends to die, just what? to fuck with Tails. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then he like easily breaks out of it with like no problem. I just love that stuff. Um, in terms of, of original characters, um. I, I might go for Commander Bruticus. And it, it was it was this robot, it was just like a robot that Robotnik made that is the only character in that run that Sonic was never able to actually defeat. He doesn't defeat him. Huh. Even Super Sonic is it, no match for him. Hmm. Um, oh, you know what? No, I don't. Take, take it back. I might, might, even though I'm sure people in the comments would be like, it's dumb and it's, it's too e- out of the edge. Agreed. But I love the um, STC interpretation of Super Sonic, which is just an evil killing machine. Hmm. His eyes go all red and spinning. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that version of Super Sonic. It's just Nogus. You think that would work best with one I think, of the games? I think there's a couple. I think there's a couple storylines mm-hmm. even within the last in the last couple of. I think that if you replaced Ixis Nogus as the villain of Unleashed, 
it would make more sense. Was a wizard? Uh, like, a well, wizard like a troll the, wizard thing? It's the, the werehog curse. He could curse Sonic. Yeah, but why, why would he break the planet open for? I mean, like, are you including the planet breaking apart? I mean, you're going to have to for Unleashed. Like, I don't... Yeah. So I why would Eggman so. break apart the planet to get Ixus Nogus out? No, no, no. I think he's saying Ixus Nogus is the bad guy. Yeah. Oh, well, he's Eggman. the one breaking the planet apart. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I don't know all the details, but I'm just saying, I think it kind of makes more... Why did Eggman break the planet apart? To get... Doc Isle. Yeah. Oh. It was like a chaos situation to get yeah. him out. Dumb. Um, <laughs> not wrong, but yeah. But, I mean, maybe maybe Ixis Nagus wants Dark Gaia. Oh, yeah. I just think that I just don't see them doing like that. His design is pretty goofy. No, I understand that, but there, I, I still think that it would fit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. It's interesting to me that you two brought up villains, because my first and only thought was to bring in Bean from the Archie comics. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know what? Totally, he fits in the Colors Lost World. Yeah, yeah you know what? Being the duck, fuck yeah. Yeah. His, Ian, his subtitles have, could be upside down or something. And have Ian Flynn write it. Yeah. Have, have, Ian Flynn doesn't write the story. He, he just actually, writes Bean's dialogue. Actually, bring it back. We'll bring Ian Flynn in. That's the character I want to play <laughs> on the Sonic games. I just want him in, literally in the game. What the hell? <laughs> you guys listen to the Bumblecast? <laughs> uh, number two from uh, Gold, Gold Storm 07. The gimmicks in the Sonic series are invariably hit or miss. Mm-hmm. What is the concept you've had for a new... Oh, this one's kind of deep. Actually, this one might need some thought if you want to come back to it in a bit. What is the concept you've had for a new gameplay mechanic or a little twist for a future Sonic game? Question mark. Other than being good. I'm just going to say it right now. <laughs> new gameplay? I'm trying to, th- I'm trying to think. I don't... I don't think I think we, we already answered this. A new gameplay hmm. mechanic. I think there's previous ones that I think would could be... Def- um, Elemental shields. <laughs> Elemental shields. I like the the notion of the, the team gimmick in Heroes. Yeah. Even the Tony Ring in Chaotic, I think you could do something like that. Maybe not as maybe as like a power up. Maybe. Um, I remember I read this one before Lost World was was um, announced. It like it was sounded mm. it sounded like a adventure free where like the guy was like you know the first level takes place in the city and Sonic and Tails like running up buildings and running through buildings and like flying together and jumping. I think like something like that could be a lot of fun, you know. Like, like I guess it's it's a mixture of 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 par- of fixing the parkour system from Lost World and making it not shit, and and uh, implementing like a buddy system like Heroes or Advance Three or Episode Two, uh, Episode Two, Episode Two, yeah. Um, so something like that I think would be would be a, it's not a new gimmick, but it's a refined older gimmick. I think that could kind of say a little twist. That's mm. pretty question. Um, as for me. Like I think putting it into practice from a development standpoint would have been would be incredibly difficult. But a lot of um, speculation that I think will be wrong about the next Sonic game is that like you can switch on the fly between two D and three D. Like heard that. like um because there's that theory that'll be like Pixel Sonic, Classic Sonic, and Modern Sonic like switching. Like you can switch the perspective, kind of like Super Paper Mario, something like that. I mean, like like in the time of boss fight in Generations. Kind of like that, yeah, because like you can go 3D and maybe you face an obstacle or you want to go a different path or something, so you switch everything to 2D, and then you can tackle things in different ways. Uh, I, mean, I would hate that. It, it sounds a little... Mm, that could be interesting. It's, it's just... It just sounds... I'm sorry, my... Inco- <laughs> it's, it sounds, sorry, my opinion is bad, TJ. It sounds incompatible with the idea of speed. That's why I said it would be incredibly difficult to implement, because yeah. how do you implement that? But it would be interesting. Because I, TJ says no. <laughs> I said no. I'm no gameplay designer, so I've certainly never thought of a new mechanic for a Sonic game. Uh, yeah, I've never thought of one either. That dog outside certainly has, though. I remember one thing we brought up last time we talked about this was um, lost it. Okay, moving, moving on. on. I guess you don't remember something from last time. Okay, you want to give it up? Nah. I'm good. Okay. Um. Three companies wrote in for the next email. Sega, Nintendo, Ubisoft writes in. (laughs) (laughs) Um, They follow us on Twitter, so I do recognize that. Hey, guys. I was wondering, if you could make a Sonic cartoon, what would it be like? Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. (laughs) You just make another season? It would be Adventures of Sonic... Uh, Sounds like you want Sonic Boom. It would be as goofy (laughs) as... Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, but I, it would include... Music was like the Winnie Tunes show? 
<laughs> it's not in, on the ground? It would include more no. uh, Archie characters instead hmm. of m- less original characters. Okay. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Chris, you? Uh, I don't have a specific idea, but I do know like other series I would like it to take some cues from from a production point. Hmm. Like, I am... The guy's waiting for the <laughs> squeaks to stop. Uh, Legend of Korra, I think, is really well produced, really fun to watch, really entertaining, has a nice sense of adventure. Characters are fun. The animation, like, it's maybe not incredible, but I think the show looks really nice consistently. Um, mm. I'd like a Sonic cartoon with a more serious plot that kind of hits all those highs and is really interesting to watch, but doesn't drag on forever either. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd want something akin to Korra, I think. I would like even even a continuation of the OVA. That yeah, that that would be my second oh, choice. Or something like something like like it's it's gonna sound dumb to say, but if Boom was slightly more serious and had had better action, um, that might be something in like that might be the direct, the direction I might I might go. Because I, I you know I love Boom. You know I have no problem with everything. It's, it's a very funny show. Yeah. yeah. Um. It. I don't. It. I don't think it delivers on the action part of its comedy action premise. Yeah, because the actually aside from uh, like there's in fifty two episodes there's maybe four good fight sequences, the rest is laughably bad. Um, aside from that though, like if Boom was had better fight sequences and a bit maybe a bit more serious kind of, like have Knuckles like be successful. One like I get that he's an idiot, but like they, they he never gets to win fights either, so he's just kind of completely useless in that show, <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Okay, and two, you just said basically. Yeah, okay, yeah, you got, I, I'm. A, I was looking through emails and kind of spaced out for a bit. Um, I gotta count down for a while. Our friend Jack MSMP wrote in. Um, oh, this joke again. I'm just gonna preface. We actually kind of already answered this, but I did want to acknowledge it on air. Uh, there have been a lot of Sonic cartoons over Sonic's history. Out of all of them, do you have a favorite, and for what reason? I think we pretty much touched on that throughout the episode, but I did want to give him a little OVA. attention. Adventures. Boom or OVA. Um, the last question I want to read comes from Jonathan, who we mentioned earlier, who provided the ticket. Um, this is a bit of a long one, so this will probably be our last thing before ending for the episode. Uh, these may actually, this may actually be two questions in one, and a complicated one to answer at that. But I hope you can give my question the light of day, uh, I think that means time of day, and try answering it. In Sonic's 3D career, the tone of the games can vary a lot from one another. For example, the tone of Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow, and 06 is nothing like the tone of Unleashed, Colors, and Generations, and in recent years it seems Sega is focusing on keeping Sonic very kid-friendly and avoiding the dark tones that Sonic used to flirt with in his early 3D lifespan. It's hard to imagine Sega going back to that style, since Sonic usually does better when the plot isn't taken very seriously, which brings me to the actual question. A lot of fans tend to wish for Sega to remake the two original Sonic Adventure games. I think it's calling us out, Gary. Yeah, yeah, I do. I want that. Uh, which personally, I would love to see, says Jonathan, but the tone of the game would stick out a lot from recent entries in the series. SA2 particularly more so than SA1. Yeah, I don't think SA1, really. I don't think it'd be too out there. Um, Aside from the child getting trampled by the echidna, there's not too much, <laughs> like, like Audi Edge stuff in SA1, you know? It is, in ways, more serious, though, than, like, Lost World or Generations. It's not as goofy, but it's not, there's not, like, people getting gunned down yeah, like there yeah. is in SA2. Yeah, there's a tonal shift. It's not that huge, though. Um... Jonathan continues, if Sega were to remake these two games, do you think they would take liberties with altering aspects of the story? For example, changing that Maria died on the Ark. And if so, how do you think they'd approach it? Because it seems like since 06, Sega hasn't really known what to do with characters like Shadow. That ties into our earlier Mm -hmm. question. Uh, This can range from things like changing the character's motives in this remake, changing the story, and even changing the voice cast if you feel it would be necessary. In parentheses, Jonathan finishes out with, I'm not taking a shot at the voice cast. I personally love them, but I don't think they'd fit in an SA-styled story. Uh, in terms of voice cast, if they remade it, if, if it was a flat-out remake, I think they would have to redo the voice uh, unless they kept the exact same script, which I don't think they do. Um, I think they would... This is more so with SA-1, because it's easier to do. Um, again, aside from a few small scenes like uh, the uh, kid in the trampoline, the chow, and all the you know, like some of the the flashback sections, you could easily make it fit in the current tone. Um, I I would imagine they'd get like 
punt that and graft and rewrite it. And maybe to the chagrin of, of some of the people who are like, they never play those games. Yeah. yeah. I think you could easily make that fit uh, without having to change too much, if, if anything, really, yeah. for SA1. Uh, after thinking about it, I realized you're right, because a lot of SA1 is goofy. I was really hung up on moments like the child being trampled. But apart from but, that, yeah, apart apart from from that, that scene, and, and nothing, which yeah. you could maybe you could get around that, but then something else. SA2 is harder. Yeah. Because unless you. And, and, and le- unless that they they remade these to kind of re to, to kind of like reach it, unless they did this to retcon Shadow's backstory, which I would love. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to. I mean, you could tone down some of the elements, um, but you kind of have to have Maria die on the mm-hmm. arc. That's that's the whole point of his character in, yeah. in, in a way. I mean, you you could you could get away. I wonder without if... showing the jail about the firing squad. Like you could get away with not showing him getting killed, but you kind of need to. At least reference Maria getting shot. Yeah, with Gerald, you could have him like people coming after him in the arc and him recording one last video in his quarters. Like, mm-hmm. you can get around the firing squad thing with that. I just, I was thinking like maybe Maria could be abducted and then Shadow frozen for 50 years or something and then him waking up and she's like already dead or something. But even then, that's still a little dark. Mm-hmm. It's not as dark, but it's still kind of. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh. This is a pretty loaded question. That's why I saved it for last. Hmm. Um, I would say, easy thing to address, voice cast. I think the current cast could actually do really well. We yeah. haven't seen them directed for a more serious uh, thing like this. Could potentially be. Kind of lost that's, not, that's completely different tonally, though. Like, they're still having them do the Saturday morning shtick. Like, certain, kind of... cuts, certain cut scenes in, in Lost World, in terms of dialogue... Go to a far darker place than even SA2 does. Um, uh, it, it just what? So, so like, like the cutscene where Eggman, it doesn't get darker than Firing Squad in a jail cell. I, no, I say in terms of dialogue, not in terms of not in terms of content, mm. but in terms of, of of the stuff they're saying. It's a lot more aggressive and violent than the dialogue. It's in a more jokey in, kind of fashion. It's in a more, you know, I, again, in terms of the overall plot, I still think that cut scene, I think it's still Mike Pollock's best performance ever. When the scene where he's like, I will burn your world, you'll be better, you scum. Like that sequence, mm-hmm. I think, it, again, it would it doesn't fit in the tone of, of SA2. It doesn't really fit in, in the tone of Lost World. It's a completely yeah. odd scene, but I love it. I, I think that they you could go to these darker places. They And there's, there's moments here and there, like even like, in Lost World, when Shadow, when Sonic, when Sonic thinks that Tails is gone, there's moments, or when he's gone, you know, he's looking at the, uh, the fucking iPad, and like, no one's picking up, he gets all sad, like, there's, they, there's small moments here and there, where like, Roger Craig Smith and Mike Pollock have gone to the kind of, darker places that, that say, a, a SA2 had, which I would love to see their, their take on this, on this material. I guess I should amend that, for one, we've seen Eggman, far longer, and we know, kind of more of his range, Two, I guess I was thinking characters like Rouge, Shadow, ones we haven't really seen lately. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, we haven't really seen Shadow or Rouge in situations other than Sideline. That's more what I was thinking. Kind of. I mean, like, in Shadow and SA2, for the most part, he's a, he's a mixture of rage and collectiveness, which yeah. I think... Which we haven't really seen from... Uh, Cook Thornton. Yeah. I would say, aside from his, his Sonic Boom episode... In that episode, Shadow is just rage and annoyance for the 11 minutes he's on screen for. He's just angry at Sonic slash Eggman and annoyed at everyone else. I haven't actually seen the English version of the episode yet. <laughs> Excuse me, Ma! Just be a big Shadow! I think it would work. I think, I know, Sega obviously they hired these guys for a reason. I think it, it would work. I think, I think the, the tonal shift that he alluded to in terms of the, um, the games is exactly why they haven't remade these games uh, in, in, in an HD, you know, a, HD format. But they keep reporting... Well, keep- here's the thing. So, I even though you guys both personally feel like it would be okay to tone down some of these aspects of, of these games to... to For the record, to- I haven't said a thing yet about that. Okay. Because you said you guys. I just want to clarify. I haven't said if I thought it'd be okay or not. Okay. Podcast anographer, please. I'm just saying, I don't think most people would be okay with that. I think they would rather not have it at all than have it have a toned down version. 
Well, see, they, mm, the, the, the thing is, because if, if it was a flat-out remake, those things tend to change things here and there. So if, if even if they were faithful, I, I doubt we'd get the exact script word for word. I think they would change things, tighten things up, remove bad things that didn't need to happen. So it wouldn't be the same thing um, as, as the originals were anyway. Um, and I think a lot of people just... I think a lot of people would, would like... Maybe... Maybe with something like Shadow to kind of streamline some of that. Because his backstory is a convoluted mess. Mm-hmm. Of, of aliens and, and, you know, demon blood and all this bollocks that no one really liked and no one really cared for. Other than Izuka. Izuka loved it. <laughs> Izuka loved everything to do with it. But yeah. I'd be fine with it. I don't really care. It's... Again, I don't play games for stories. I don't give a fuck what they do with the, that, yeah, you know, no, the you story. Don't. I do. <laughs> what? SA2 still there? Why not? Still play the original SA2. What's the big deal? I don't know. I guess to address the question specifically, though, and what it is asking, um. God, I gotta find it. Um, I think they would absolutely take those liberties with altering aspects. Because um, we know it, it wasn't actually asking what I thought it would do or how I think they would approach it. It was, well, it does ask how I think they'd approach it. I think they would take those liberties. I think they'd probably find a middle ground between back then and recent in terms of tone, things presented. Um, I think they'd approach it in a way that they think is good, but fans would probably complain a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a very good question. It just needs so many hypotheticals that we don't really have a grasp on because it's been so long since then, and we haven't really ever seen Sega like try and retackle and Sonic Team try and retackle an old thing to this degree and update it. I mean, some stuff in Sonic Four, I guess, kind of builds on the classics, but we've never seen them be like, "Here's Heroes again. Here's O Six again." In terms of iterations, like, uh, in terms of like updating a plot mm-hmm. and like making it, you know, retcons. Um, the last time they did that was Shadow, and we all know how, how that went. Yeah, and that was eleven years ago, almost. Yeah, eleven yeah. years ago. So I don't know. It's it's an interesting question, but it's just really sad to think about because it won't happen. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's 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 yeah. I mean, it's, it's ultimately it's more of a opinion piece, and it's, I just think that. I, I don't know if, if Sega would even tackle that. I mean, I, I think, again, you could get away with it with an SA1, which you don't have to change that much at all. Um, SA2, again, it becomes... And then, in that case, you, you know, you do, you're do you on the risk of, of annoying the, the core fan base. You know, the adventure fan. Cause God, imagine if, if they changed a bunch of stuff, how the uh, SA3 Facebook page would have a field there with that. Mm-hmm. They would not be happy. No, they would not. We have hit the two-hour mark. I was thinking we could have some 25th anniversary topic, but I think we are burning out, and I think two hours is plenty long for a Sonic podcast. <laughs> it, it'd probably be better to wait until after the party at this point. Yeah. Because everything, everything before that is just going to be mindless speculation. Yeah. Um, to that end, uh, we haven't talked about when we'll be seeing each other next, but um, we, we do have fun. We do have too many games. Um I was thinking in this area. We do have Fund the Charity Room picking up in on July 10th, right? 9th, I believe. July 9th. Um, oh, 10 is the time we're starting in Eastern. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, and that's lasting until the 17th. 17th. So you can look forward to us there. Um, we probably can't tease any special surprises we have planned just in case they fall apart. Mm. As much as we'd love to. <laughs> Trust us. So, um, yeah, please look forward to fund the charity room. Um, what LPs will be up that we can... Because we're supposed to start synergizing more. DuckTales will be starting the day after this. Donkey Kong will have been yesterday. It will be yesterday. And uh, Friday will be... Eight? Yeah. I was okay. like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, Friday's going to be starting. <laughs> you know, the it's, classic it's, Mega Man It's going to be starting Mega Man and Chris was doing this weird fucking dance. I was thinking NES Mega Man and that weird stupid run he this had. This is 32-bit Mega Man, yeah. Chris. I don't know. Mega we, Man. We're going to be doing uh, Mega Man uh, 8. Yeah. 
Um, and that should last. Both of us should last this for above about a seven month. Parts. So about, about a month, roughly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I think that does it for this episode of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I figured putting our Twitter names out there might be a smart thing. If you somehow made it this far, if you want to see me whine about Crash Bandicoot being in Skylanders only, you can follow me on Mik- at Mikonus Fan. TJ? At T-E-H underscore Stof, S-T-O-F. Uh, I'm at uh, the real FTA, and if you want to follow more just exclusively on FTCR, not our personal drivel, you can follow on um, the channel at, at FTCR. Which frequently has personal drivel on it, but... <laughs> or if you just ask to criticize and Skylar. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, fuck Guess Fox Sky. Fox Skylar. Oh, did we want to mention Matt? That, that'll be announced tomorrow, uh, aka Sunday, by the time this goes up. No? TJ doesn't like Matt? Okay. <laughs> um, so it turns out Matt died. And yeah, I we, killed him. And we don't really care. So um, we'll see fuck you. Fuck, channel. We'll see you next month. We don't know when we'll have that episode. I will give the preface we may be late because it'll take until the end of the month for that Sonic game to get announced. And if I'm there at the party, I still got to come back and we have some personal plans after that. You know, I, I'm going to I'm gonna put it out there. It's very likely we won't have a hot car stop up until the beginning of August just because for most of July we have Fun the Charity Room. And the, then and then the party. It's I mean I, I to me I just feel like there's not It's better to not it's better to undersell instead of oversell. Mm-hmm. Say we have something when we won't instead of you know I'm just saying that like You're being smart. Yeah, and also it's like it I I just feel there's no point in us doing a podcast the week before. Because yeah, it's just yeah, like exactly. it's we... gonna be going out two days time, we'll talk about it now. Yeah, because we gotta wait till afterward. Um the um I guess it'll depend on our schedules. Maybe we can get on Skype and do a short little thing about our thoughts but we'll see until then thank you for listening and uh be patient